Atik WWA Wakeboard World Championships presented by GM Marine. We are in beautiful Portugal, Lago Azul, for the final day of competition. Todd Harris alongside Mark Hager and Courage Criddle with you. Before we get to the actual action, we want to bring you up to speed. Yesterday, an amazing day of competition, but at the end of the day, we had some serious storms come through. Some damage was done to the audio and video equipment, so we are trying to get by with what we have, so we apologize in advance if the pictures aren't as crisp and the sound isn't as good, but we're happy just to bring you pictures. The best news is all, no one was seriously injured, so we are up and running. We've changed the schedule just a little bit. We're kicking things off with the pro men's semifinals, and we've already run two heats. Happy to announce that Masi Pifferetti and Nick Rapa have gone into the final, as has Tyler Hyam and Sam Brown. And we're into the third and final heat of the Men's Pro. Shota Tezuka has just been out on the water. He is wrapped up. So we've got four more to go. And Mark, a crazy day yesterday, a lot of riding, but we've made it to Sunday, Championship Sunday. Yeah, you know, as they say, the show must go on, Todd. You know, we had some crazy weather happen. Before that, we had some incredible riding. Uh, now, yesterday does have... A Kind of a, a dark cloud over it, both metaphorically and physically. No question. But, uh, you know, today the riders out here bright and early. We're excited to get the semifinal round of action out of the way and see which of these pro men riders are going to be joining us in the final round. All right, we've got that stuff to come. So we've got four more athletes you'll see in the pro men, and that'll be exciting stuff. Then we'll move right into the pro women's final. We'll have the pro women final a, a, a little later on. And then the junior pro final, of course, we'll take a break and we'll have the pro foil strap final, the pro foil uh, final, as well as the pro wake skate final. So, full day of finals today, to say the least. Noah Flegel getting set to go, the Nautique athlete, and all of these athletes lucky enough to be riding behind that Super Aero Nautique G23. Mark and I have both been, I can report, happily salivating on the shore, watching that boat go by and just wishing we got a pass behind it. But the water today is fantastic. Yesterday, wind coming up. Mark, it really created a lot of rollers. Some of the athletes really struggling to get through their run. But today, it is a lot calmer. Really, no wind. Temperature's perfect, and the athletes seem to really be enjoying this course. Yeah, it's definitely a cool, crisp morning out here on Lago Azul. Uh, some of these riders from Florida, from Australia, man, they are normally adjusted to that real hot, warm weather. Today, it's a little bit brisk out there. It's a little chillier than expected. But, you know, they are getting loose, and man, so far in the first three heats, or excuse me, in the first two heats, the riding has been absolutely amazing. Right now, we're about to get Noah Flegel, Nautique team athlete at a Lighthouse Point, Florida, out on the water to kick off his semifinal run. So as we mentioned at the top of this broadcast, we are down a few cameras because of the storm that came through and did the damage. Unfortunately, uh, we may not have that drone shot today because yesterday those amazing angles that they gave us. But we carry on. As Mark said, the show must go on and Noah Flegel out on the water now, trying to get himself into the top two. He's got a tough heat, though. We just saw Shota, it'll be Noah, then it'll be Luca Kidd, Jake Pilat, and Corey Tunison, but only two can move on into the final. Yeah, well, of all the people in this heat, Noah Flegel definitely one to watch. You know, this guy an all-around waterman, not only a pro-level wakeboarder, also a pro-level wake surfer, also a pro-level foiler, and can even ride on the ocean waves as well. You know, it, it doesn't matter what you put him on, he is absolutely incredible at it. Unfortunately, he was really swinging for the fences right there, right out of the gate, going for that toe side 1080. That would be our first 1080 of the Oof. weekend, and unfortunately, you can see just dropping the handle, yeah. going for three full rotations right out of the gate. You know, Noah Flegel came to win. He doesn't want to leave, uh, you know, anything right. on the table. He's trying to make it happen right here, right now. And you know what's great about these world-class athletes, Mark, is you've been around the sport so much, is they are constantly pushing it. No one's settling for, okay, he could have done a 9 and been a lot safer, a 7-20 and, and landed it easily. It's progression. They're pushing it, they're pushing it, they're pushing it. So congratulations to Noah Flegel. You just earned yourself your first and only pickup here in this semifinal. I think it was just a case of you just want to get the hair wet reset. Yeah, absolutely. You know, sometimes getting that first fall out of the way early can, can actually help an athlete just relieve some of that pressure. Some of the nerves that they're feeling on the dock of wanting to land everything so perfect. And sometimes when you take that early fall, you know, all right, now I can just get out there. I can do what I know I can do. 
and make it happen when it counts. So we're going to hope that's the case for Noah as he gets back up on the water to continue on with his first pass. So Noah Flegel back up. Remember, this is his first pass, and he's already got his one pickup. Coming up, it'll be Luca Kidd from Great Britain, then Jake Pollock from USA, and then Corey Tunis of Australia will be wrapping things up. Yeah, well, Noah, once again, coming in on that switch toe side edge, and this time backing off a 180 from that straight, doing the toe side 900, making sure that he gets the tricks down. He really wants to hustle for three right here. So then he did the heel side 720, and then right there, there's the Moby Dick 540. And it looks like he might still try and squeak one in. Nice job. There's the Crow 5. Right at that end, of course, buoy. We're going to see if the judges count. But nevertheless, a great job, a great recovery from Noah Flegel. How much influence do you think having an early fall affects the judges? Does it really matter where you fall on the course uh, to affect your score? Well, you know, in this format, these pro men are limited to four tricks per pass. They can do four tricks down. They can do four tricks back. The judge is always looking for quality over quantity. Now, if they do happen to fall, those falls do not count against them. They don't deduct any from anything from their score, but it does take up valuable real estate in their contest pass. So, uh, you know, having an early fall allows you to get back on the water and hopefully squeeze in three, maybe four tricks. Now, Noah Flea will back up and back at it, doing that three, two, one right out of the gate, the 360 to a rewind backside 180. Then doing the hillside seven oh. and trying to go for that Japan grab back mode. Unfortunately, going down, and because it's his second fall, yeah. that's going to do it for him. So he only gets credited really with six, maybe seven tricks because he only got the two on that second pass. Might have squeezed in the four on the first pass, and that's where the math comes into play, Mark, with guys that are getting full four on each pass, eight tricks to be judged against as opposed to six. Obviously, you can see where the math comes into play. So that beautiful Super Air Nautique G23 will make its way back to the dock, pick up the next rider, which should be none other than Luca Kidd from Great Britain out of London. And we will see what happens as 50 was the score that came down for Shota. So 50 becomes the mark to beat. You gotta wonder if Noah Flegel is gonna be near 50. Yeah, you know, given that performance, I'd say he's gonna be right around that mark. You know, he he got some really great tricks in. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, he did have an early end to his run. So as we wait for the scores to come back in for Noah, you know, it's really anyone's game. You know, we haven't seen a stand-up run in this third heat yet. So these last three riders really have a chance to get into the final round. Uh, you know, they're only taking the top two out of each of these heats so that we'll have a six-man final later on. And, man, any of these next three riders are capable of getting into that final round. You see right here the replay from Noah's opening trick, going for that switch toe 10. But here are some of the great highlights from his run. Oh, oh. no. Unfortunately, you know, showing the falls, Noah trying to get that Japan-style back mode, reaching all the way across his board with that front hand, stretching it out as he does the back roll with the front side 360. Just couldn't grab the handle. A heartbreaker for sure, but you never know how it's gonna play out. So 50 becomes that mark to beat. Shota Tsuka from Japan has that. And Noah Flegel waiting for his score to drop with two, three more athletes still to go. Now on the boat, Luca Kidd rides out of London but spends a ton of time as Mark has educated us on out of Florida, kind of moves around the world. He lists the Thames River as his home lake, but I don't know if he's doing a whole lot of riding on the Thames. Yeah, Luca Kidd, one of those guys that has made the transition out of his home country to spend the majority of his year down near Orlando, Florida. You know, Orlando, Florida is the mecca of wake sports, and that's where most of the athletes spend their U.S. spring, summer, and fall. You know, a ton of contests go on in the U.S., and with that awesome weather most of the year round. It's just a dream to be down in Orlando, Florida, ride on all the water that they have there. And Luca Kidd, one of the riders that takes advantage of that. So Luca Kidd now, he will begin his run, make a big circle, come back into it, start to warm up the legs as we saw him.
get himself into position. Jake Pilat and Corey Tudison are waiting in the wings. So an international field to wrap up the semifinals, Great Britain, USA, and Australia. And then we will have our final set for the pro men. Yeah, Luka Kid, a rider that has really had one of his best contest years this year. And he's feeling a ton of momentum coming into the semifinals. He rode absolutely awesome yesterday in the quarterfinals. He's hoping to have a repeat here today. Starting things off with that nose grab, Chromo 540. Now getting wrapped up and going nose grab wrecking ball right there. It's an old school trick that he puts a new school twist on, grabbing nose all the way through as he does the tantrum to wrap backside 360. Then going mm. tail grab on that switch heel seven two times around for Luca Kid, and then going back to back sevens right there. You see the backside seven to finish off pass number one. So far, Luca Kid is halfway home to a stand-up run. Five men in each semi-final, only top two moving on to the big show, which you'll see later on today. Already in there is Massimo Pifferetti, Nick Rappa, Tyler Hyam, and Sam Brown. We're looking for two more athletes to join them in the men's pro final. And here comes pass number two for Great Britain's Luca Kidd. Yeah, now if Luca was to make it into the final, man, I know he would be absolutely stoked out of his mind. This young kid has been working so hard to make it happen. And right there, you see that pinball style roll to blind. He goes all the way to one end and then rewinds it back the opposite direction. Then going heel side seven right there, a switch front side heel seven. Now, Luca has done a great job showing the judges that he can spin in both directions, over his left shoulder and over his right shoulder. Oh, man. He pulled the parachute right there. Normally, he would do the half cab double back roll. He settled for one single half cab roll. The important thing is he's staying on his feet. There's the KGB5. Awesome job. He's got to be excited. He got eight tricks in, and that's a great run for Luca Kidd. So Luca Kidd goes top to bottom, full pull for him in his semifinal run. Will it be enough? Right now, the mark beat that 50 put up by. Shota Tezuka, top three, top two, excuse me, are moving on to the final. So Luca Kid, all the way through, both passes clean. And it's a 66 6 7 now is the mark to be put up by Noah Flegel. So Luca Kid looking to be equal to or better than the 66.67, knowing that Jake Pilot of the USA and Corey Tunison of Australia are still to come. Yeah, now Luca Kid's run, an awesome run done by Luca. He did have the bobble on that half cab double back roll. He settled for the single half cab roll. Probably didn't get the pop that he was expecting, but he stayed on his feet. He got eight tricks in, and now Jake Pilat and Corey Tunison are going to have to get eight tricks each in order to get through to the final. So pressure mounting for the final two competitors in the men's pro already waiting, as we pointed out, Masti Pefred in Italy, Nick Rapp of Australia, Tyler Heim of the USA, and Sam Brown of Australia. Those four are already safely into the men's pro final. We're looking for two more athletes to join them before the big showdown later today in the men's pro final here in beautiful Portugal on Laga Azul. Coming up next, we remind you the pro women final, and we've got nine women that have made that final to crown a champion. That's coming up as soon as we finish up the semifinals for the men's pros, and we've got two more athletes to go. So the women's pro, they should be going off in about 20 minutes if they want to start getting themselves down into position. We look forward to that, and of course, we'll have the men's pro final coming up after the women are done. So full morning. 
despite the storm that came through yesterday, we are pressing forward. And uh, technology is a little different than we had yesterday, but it's all good. We're going to get this going, and we're glad for the folks watching around the world on the web. They can get the pictures and some sound. We get a good look now at Jake Pallotta of the USA getting himself into position, ready for his opportunity to punch his ticket into the final. Yeah, Jake Pallotta, one of those riders that might not always have the biggest banger tricks out of the entire field, but man, he consistently makes the final because of his consistent riding. Jake Pallotta able to put down solid eight tricks so often in these contests and he's able to sneak his way into the finals so often one of the nicest guys on the planet we always love hanging out with jake a lot an incredible writer born and raised in orlando florida and so man he has spent so much time on the water and we're going to see what jake a has for us as we turn him around and get him ready for pass number one So he's better than a 66.67 to get himself in a transfer position into the final as Pilat waits for his opportunity to show the judges what he can do. Four tricks going down on pass one, four tricks coming back on pass number two, and he is now on course. Yeah, Jake starting things off with a nose grab, heel side, front side, 720. So smooth, so clean from Jake Pilat. Now back in. On his opposite heels, there's the indie grab roll to blind, a little tail heavy on the landing, but didn't check his hands, didn't butt check at all. So he's still looking very solid out there. A nose grab chrome 540, the toe side front roll with the front side five. That is a big chick for Jake. And then a nose grab heel side seven in the opposite direction. So Jake Pilat putting down two 720s, a crow five and a roll to blind in pass number one. So far, I would say Jake is looking very solid. Not a bad quartet for the young man from Orlando, Florida, as he looks to get himself into the final. Looks at us one more time. This is the opening pass. Yeah, right here you see that nose grab crow mode 540. Jake Lott laying it, standing very high, taking the transition of the weight just perfectly as he lands, almost like he never took off at all. Well, now coming in for his second pass, Jake starting off with a toe side approach and trying to go toe side 900. Unfortunately, just coming up a hair short, not able to sync up his hands and his body. Now, as we've mentioned earlier in the week, taking a fall is never a good thing when you're in a contest. But of all the places to fall, coming out of the turnaround and your first trick in pass number two right. is a great place to do it because you can still get back up on the water. You have plenty of real estate left in front of you to where Jake might still be able to get four tricks on his scorecard if he hustles during his second pass. Does that mess up the momentum of your routine that now that you have a little bit shorter, maybe 100 meters, 200 meters shorter on your second pass, and so you got to squeeze things in? Does he change things, or does he try to stick where he has and just speed it up? You know, for a lot of riders, it does mess up the momentum just because it halted the flow that you were in. But a rider like Jake Pilat, he doesn't need a ton of setup time for his tricks. Oftentimes, we see Jake packing in more tricks than a lot of the riders do because he goes right into each trick without taking a whole lot of setup time. So I would predict that he's going to try and squeeze in four tricks here as opposed to just getting three big tricks. All right, here we go. The Super Aeronaut G23 is up and planing. And here's Jake Pilat out of Orlando, Florida on his second pass. Jake getting right back into it with that 3-2-1, the 360 to rewind, backside 180. Then going switch mute mode, that switch back roll with the front side 360. Again, right back in, you see him hustling, getting that heel seven. He's going to go right in and try and squeeze out four and get the melon toe seven. So you see right there, Jake Pilat with a smile on his face, ends up with four trips. Yep even though he had an early fall in the past. 
So well done, Jake Pilat, working the quick motion and getting those four tricks on pass number two after a shortened course on a fall as he began the second pass. And we'll have a look at some of the highlights again as Pilat gets those four in for the judges to examine. Still waiting for a score to come down from Luca Kidd, but we do know that a 66.67 is pretty much the mark to beat. That's the bubble. You need to be above that if you want to guarantee your spot into the final. And it's still an 80 that Luca Kidd got. So it's an 80. So Luca Kidd's 80 is the mark to beat. 66.67 will put you into second. And we'll see what Jake Pilat gets with Corey Tunis in the final athlete. Nazi athletes still to go here out of the waters of Wadozul. Yeah, now, Todd, this World Championships is a contest in itself. You know, at the end of today, we will get to crown a wakeboard world champion. But this is also part of the wakeboard world series. And as the fourth and final stop of the wakeboard world series, each rider has been accumulating points all throughout the season. And currently, as it stands, this last rider off the dock, Corey Tunison, is in the lead for the overall Wakeboard World Series Championship. We started with an event down in Australia. That's the Nautique Moomba Masters. Then we had the event in the United States, the Nautique Masters and the U.S. National Championships. And now here in Portugal for the World Championships to complete that full Wakeboard World Series So Corey Tunison will be the final athlete to go in the semifinal round, and then we will know for sure who is moving on to the final. Depending on the score that comes in for Jake Pilat, you'd think Luca Kidd's in pretty good territory sitting on that 80. Yeah, Luca definitely having a solid score with that 80. Now, again, he did bobble a trick. Where he wanted a double, he settled for the half cab roll. Jake Pilat had a fall, which mm -hmm. will count against some of his fluidity in his run. But ultimately, he got eight tricks in. And they were good tricks. So we're going to see. It will be tight between Luca and Jake. Not sure which one's going to come out on top there. But with this last rider, Nautique team rider, Corey Tunison out of Australia, man, you know that there are no margins of error that you can leave open. Corey Tunison, an athlete that has done it all and won it all. A past world champion, a past U.S. national champion, a past Australian national champion. He has been highly, highly decorated, and every time he hits the water, man, people are watching to see what he's got. So Tunison gearing up as we still wait for that score to drop for Jake Pilat, and then we'll have a better idea of who's in, who's out. Tunison though, is really controlling his own destiny right now because all he needs to do is do what he does. And we see the score coming in now. It's a 76.67, 76.67 for Jake Pilat. Yeah, that means that Luca Kidd has punched his ticket yep. into the final round of action. Man, that's awesome for Luca. He is going to be so stoked. And right now we've got our last rider who can start changing the order in this third heat of Pro Men Semifinals. He's on the water. They call him Big Tuna right here, right now. This is Corey Tunison. So Tunison needs better than a 76.67 to get into the final. It's as simple as that. Eight tricks, two passes, and it's all to play for now. Well, Corey starting things off with a heel side approach. And going massive heel side, front side, 900 right out of the gate. Now coming in on his regular heels. 
and going nose grab backside 720. So taking that spin to win mentality very seriously right out of the gate for his first pass. Now going upside down with that crossed up trail grab, toe side roll to blind. A very difficult rotation. Corey making it look so smooth. And then way up there on that melon crow five. Absolutely awesome stuff, as you would expect right. from the overall leader of the Wake Forest World Series, Corey Tunison, looking like the champ that he is. Halfway home, pass number one, four tricks in, four tricks down. He now makes the turn. He'll come back home. And barring a really a, a late fall or maybe a fall halfway through, he's looking really strong. It'll be interesting to see what he rolls out for the judges here on his final pass. All right, well, keep your eyes to the skies because Corey Tunison is coming in for a second pass. Kill side approach two times oh. around right there with that mute half cab double back roll. Absolutely automatic for Tunison. Now back in on his switch toes and going switch toe side 900. Two and a half rotations right there for Corey. Back in. On his heels, there's the switch mode. So far, three switch tricks in this run. Now taking his regular approach and mm. poking out that tail grab tantrum to blind. He's got so much style. That's eight tricks for Corey. Yep. I think it's safe to say that he is going to be very happy with that run. And you know what? I'm not a judge, but I would Go definitely on predict on that Corey is going to punch his ticket into the finals. So we know that Luca Kidd is in. Sam Brown, Tyler Heimer also in. That Sam Brown, Nick Tyler Heimer that also nasty in. Nick Ram, Sam Brown, Nick Ram, Ram, We're just waiting to see if, 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 if Mark is right and Corey Tunison has done enough to get himself into the final. I'm going with you completely. That, that run was sensational. Uh, Corey Tunison, come on. We can't have a final without the big tuna. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome job from all those riders in the semifinals. Man, what a great way to start day number four of the Nautique WWA Wakeboard World Championships presented by GM. As we conclude our pro men's semifinals, we are about to get started with our pro women's final round of action. And in a very unique situation, this is a nine woman super final. These ladies are stacked up to the gills in this finals. We have got Italians, we've got Japanese riders, we have Argentinian riders, we have Australian riders, and riders from the United States. It is a fully international affair with nine of the best female riders on the planet about to battle it out in this pro women's final. So the pro women final coming up, as we've just watched the pro men semi-final complete their run, waiting for confirmation that Corey Tunison did in fact do enough to get himself into the men's final. Six men will be competing shortly after. That should be coming up oh, around 10, 10, 15. And here we go, the women's pro. You got Jamie Lapina, Mackenzie McCarthy, Mary Morgan Howell, and Zara Kell in the pro women's final. All kinds of international athletes traveling the world to beautiful Portugal to see if they can stake claim on the world title this year. Final day of competition here at the 2023 Nati WWA Wakeboard World Championship presented by GM Marine as the women take to the water now in the final, a nine woman affair looking for a world champion here today on the waters of Portugal. Thank you. 
Italy's Alice Mareg will be the first one to make her pass. Yeah, Elise Virag, part of the Virag Twin Sisters. And man, these young ladies have broken onto the pro scene with incredible results. Uh, we have seen the Virag Sisters come out and throw tricks in the pro women's division that we've never seen before. Tricks like switch and regular KGBs, the back roll with a backside 360. These girls are so good with either foot forward. And so they have really mixed up this pro women's final with some incredible moves. Elise Virag setting the tone for the rest of the riders here to follow. And it has got to be a high tone indeed. Because with nine riders in this final, yeah. you know that some of them are going to come out here and kill it. So you cannot leave anything on the table. Elise starting things out with that Tootsie roll, following up with a big, slow heel side, front side 360. Now back in on the toes. Again, opting for a spin. That's the toe side, front side 540. One and a half rotations for Elise Virag out of Italy. And now back in on the heels. There's the handle pass, Ooh. roll to blind, a technical trick with a blind rotation, having to turn her back to the boat and execute a blind landing. Elise Virag doing a great job in pass number one. How about this save on the landing? Yeah, you see, pacing the wake a little bit, just missing that transition of the landing, but knowing where she was in the air, having great aerial awareness, to know that she was going to have to brace for impact. Elise Virag doing an awesome job to finish off that first pass. So here she comes back for her second pass. Four tricks up, four tricks down on pass number one. Well, she is starting out very wide on pass number two and going heel side, front side, 540 right out of the gate. Awesome stuff from Elise Virag. Back in with the heel side, backside 360. Now in on her regular toes, going up and over the top. Oh, dumb -dumb. nice save. A little bit butt checked, but staying on her feet, she has the chance to get eight tricks in. Can she do it to start off this pro women's final? Oh, no. Going for the Moby Dick there at the end. Unfortunately, going down, but still seven tricks to start off this pro women's final of nine riders, Elise Virag definitely should feel great about the performance she just put down. Well, just making it into the final with the elite talent that we have here in Portugal is to say something. Elise Virag with a great run here in the women's pro final. Let's take a look one more time. This is on the second pass. Yeah, Elise, right there, you see that heel side, front side, 540, leaning so smooth, so clean. And then right here, a nice, slow, roasted backside 360. There's the Dum Dum, one of the more technically difficult tricks. Unfortunately, she did have a butt check on it, but she executed it enough to get back on her feet, so she won't get the full score that she normally would if she stomped that landing, but she will get points for that dum-dum. So Liz Frog makes her way back to the dock. Her score comes in as a 58-33, 58.33 for the Italian Elise Frog. Nine women in the pro final. Next up, from Japan, it'll be Hanada Yoshihara. Well, Elise Verag's score coming in with a 58.33. Great job. You know, it's not the best score that she could have hoped for, but 
it is a good score to set the tone. You know, these ladies here to follow know that they they aren't going to have an easy opportunity to get onto the podium. They have to work for it. Elise Verag doing a great job, having a great showing here in Portugal. And now we're moving on to our second rider off the dock, a rider that I have really enjoyed watching this year. Hinata Yoshihara out of Japan. This year, she moved to the U.S. to spend her full summer in the United States. And man, this girl gets so much vertical pop in her riding. She gets really down low during her approach. And man, she has just figured out how to use those legs to blast into the air. Hinata Yoshihara, always a fun rider to watch ride. So 58.33 is the mark to beat right now, put up by Elise Verag of Italy, Hinata Yoshihara of Japan, making her circle back, and then she's on the course. Four tricks down, four tricks back, two passes. Best score wins the title. All right, we see that Super Aeronautique G23 making the circle to give Hinata a straight shot into pass number one. And here we go as she crosses that start of course buoy, all eyes on the water as Hinata takes a heel side approach and going upside down with that heel side back roll, grabbing Indy as she does it, reaching down with that backhand, grabbing the toe edge of her board, and then coming right back in with that indie toe side front roll, two inverts to get her started, and now making it a third with the indie tantrum. Taking her time right here. This is a long course, so the athlete's able to use a little bit of setup in between the tricks, and Hinata now going in, nice. unwrapping that heel side front side five, Hinata putting down four tricks in pass number one, exactly what she needed to do. They were good tricks. Right. I wouldn't say that there was any great tricks in there. The other thing that you can notice from Hinata's run is every single invert she grabbed, that is definitely a bonus. Now, she did do the same grab on all three inverts. It would have been nice to see her change up that grab, but regardless, she got four tricks on the scorecard. She is definitely feeling the momentum as she comes into this second pass. Well, right there, there's a big trick that we were looking for, the KGB, the back roll with a backside 360. Now Hinata's stepping the game up even more, putting the Tootsie roll right after the KGB, two handle pass inverts, Hinata swinging for the fences right now and going heel side, oh. side 540, trying to continue with some big tricks and unfortunately taking a fall. Now we're going to see if that three quarter buoy comes into play. That was her third trick. So that means that she's going to be close to that three quarter buoy. That's the point of no return. If an athlete falls after the three-quarter buoy on their second pass. Unfortunately, there's just not enough time for the boat to get on plane, shape up the wake, and allow the athletes to continue getting a trick in. Now, it's always the judge's call of whether they are at the three-quarter buoy, right. before it, after it. It looks like yeah. she is going to get a pickup, so she must have just been right on that line. So Hinata Yoshihara will have one final opportunity to oppress the judges after that fall fell outside the three-quarter buoy. She gets the pickup, score to beat 58.33, put up by Italy's Rag. And here we go. Yoshihara is going to have to work fast. Well, she definitely needs to hustle. She's going to get one more trick in, or at least the opportunity for one more trick. She's taking that heel side edge. Oh, wanted to land Same that trick. heel side five. Unfortunately, that trick has her number today. And it's the same result that we just saw. Deja vu.
for Hinata Yoshihara, but a great job up to that point. Hinata Yoshihara was very clean on pass number one, but her undoing came just before the three-quarter buoy. She does get the pickup. She went back to the same trick that she fell on, and unfortunately, as Mark pointed out, the same result. So two athletes up, two athletes down. As we look at this one more time, great maneuvers, excellent inverts. Yoshihara was a nice grab, showing control, landing was smooth. And unfortunately, at that end, just unable to link up that final one. Still, she will get credit with these seven tricks. Successful. Yeah, you know, the thing that I really liked about Hinata's run is it built on itself. She started out with some more basic inverts. Now, grabbing them, making them look great. But then on pass number two, she continued to build. She put in harder and harder tricks as she worked her way down. As if the more comfortable she got out right. there, the bigger her tricks got. And that was awesome to watch. Hinata Yoshihara out of Japan doing a fantastic job here in this pro women's final. And the judges like it to the tune of 70.67. So 70.67 for Japan's Yoshihara. And that becomes the new mark to beat with two athletes completed and seven more still to go here in pro women's final at the 2023 WWA Wakeboard World Championship presented by GM Marie. Megan Ethel now getting herself into position. Get an idea of what she needs to do. A 70.67, not a monster score, but uh, you're, you're definitely going to have to link together some good tricks, Mark, and you have to impress the judge. You can't just go out there and straight air this thing. Yeah, that's the truth. And Megan Ethel finds herself in a bit of a strange position for her. You know, Megan normally used to going last off the dock. She is always such a good competitor, and she has been this weekend as well. But she finds herself going off the dock a little earlier in the heat. You know, she's wearing that gold jersey because she is the current leader on the overall Wakeboard World Series. And we're going to see if she can continue that. Now, Megan is calculated. She knows what she needs to do to get on a podium. She has some of the biggest tricks in women's wakeboarding. She is a phenomenal rider. And hopefully right now, We'll get to see her writing on full display. Megan Ethel in the water, and she is up as she prepares. Remember, two passes, eight tricks. We'll see what she can do. Score to beat a 70.67 put up by Japan's Hinata Yoshihara. Yeah, well, they call Megan Ethel main event. And when she's on the water, it is the main event. She is always so good out there, not only with technical tricks, but she also has an incredible amount of style with the big tricks that she does. She's starting off pass number one, all wrapped up. There's the nose grab KGB, a difficult trick right out of the gate. Megan Ethel making it look so smooth. And then right there, the nose grab, toe side, front side, 540. Back in on her opposite toes, another toe side, front side, 540. One regular, one switch. And Megan Ethel now coming back in on her dominant stance, again, wrapped up and going nose grab wow. tootsie roll you don't see many riders doing wrapped tootsie rolls megan ethel one of the only ones to do it and because she does it it allows her to grab it all the way through adding that extra style onto that trick so four tricks in the bag for megan ethel so far everything's looking great let's take a look at some of the highlights here Look at this, Megan Ethel coming in clean. Not a lot of pop, not a lot of vert on there, but she comes in and just puts the landing gear down so smooth. Here we go. Pass number two, Megan Ethel trying to top a 70.67 to put her into first. 
Well, Megan and Ethel definitely feeling the flow right now and trying to keep that momentum with her as she comes in for her second pass, unwrapping on that heel side, front side, 540. Now back in on her dominant heels, Megan going indie back roll, keeping it simple, making sure that she is staying on her feet. She wants to get eight tricks here. And there's the nose grab scarecrow grabbing the board almost all the way until it hits the water. Her final trick down here at the end of the course. She's taking her time for it. She wants it to be a big one. And it is the whirly bird going upside down and all the way around with that tantrum Olay backside 360. An awesome job from Megan Ethel. Down and back in under three minutes, Megan Ethel is in the clubhouse with a solid score. We'll wait to see what the judges think of it. Remember, she needs to be a 70.67 to move into the lead. She's probably hoping for a lot more than that as we take a look at some of the highlights from her first pass. Very strong, very clean. Her landings are just spot on. Yeah, Megan always so calculated in the tricks she's doing. She doesn't just want to land tricks. She wants to make them look good. And you can see that in her style as she holds on to her grabs for so long. Even in a contest, she is worried about the way that the tricks look. And Megan putting down a solid eight tricks. You know, right now, the other competitors on the dock, they are starting to sweat. So well done, Megan Ethel, representing the USA here in Portugal, the Nazi WWA Wakeboard World Championships, presented by GM Marine. We're on the final day, Championship Sunday. Champions will be crowned world titles handed out at the end of today. We're just so glad that everyone was safe from yesterday, and we're back here to wrap things up here at the World Championships. So Megan Ethel waiting for her score to come in. Be surprised if it's not above a 70.67, but the judges now have it in their hand as she makes her way back to the dock. All right, we're continuing on with the women's competition. This is the pro women final. Three women have already gone. We've got six more to go. A monster final with nine competitors competing here on the waters of Lago Azul in beautiful Portugal, the world championship. We've got Italians, we've got Argentinians, Americans, Australians still to come to try to claim their spot on that world championship podium. Italian Lisa Fiani now. Lisi Piano from Italy will be the next to go. We're still waiting for the score from Megan Ethel to drop. She's trying to outdo that 70.67 put up by Japan, Tanada Yoshihara. And the score does come in. So Megan Ethel gets an 81.67. 81.67 for American Megan Ethel. So that means she moves into first place and sets the new mark to be 81.67. Yeah, well, that's a great score for Megan. She definitely is going to be happy with that. Hopefully it'll be enough to land her on that podium. But we still have a lot of riders left to go in this nine women final. Now, next up on the water, a rider that I don't think many people expected to be here in the final. This young lady out of Italy, not really a household name in women's wakeboarding. She came out of the woodwork here at the World Championships, impressed everybody in her quarterfinals and semifinals runs. And now here in the final, Elisa Piana ready to take on the challenge that's set before her. She's starting things off with a heel side approach and going massive with that indie tantrum right out of the gate. 
awesome job. I love the way this girl pops. She's getting a, a ton of amplitude. Nice clean landings right there. You see the toe side front roll. So far, so good for Elisa Piana. Then getting the spin. That's the heel side, front side, 540. One and a half rotations. She takes off with her dominant foot forward, lands with her opposite foot forward, and now back in, landing the Tootsie Roll as clean as you like. Awesome job. And the relatively newcomer to the pro women's division, man, she is impressing a lot of people on the shore right now. So that's pass number one for the Italian. Four tricks in. Look at it one more time. Very smooth, very clean. To show the judges a little bit of everything. Nice pass through. Case that one just a little bit, but was able to salvage the landing, and now she'll make her way back for pass number two. All right, Elisa Piana looking to continue what she did in pass number one. Now taking that toe side approach and going toe side, front side, 540 right there out of the gate. That's her second 540 of the run. A great job as she's getting some big spins on her scorecard. Following that up with the Indy heel side back roll. And now getting wrapped up, utilizing that wrapped handle. She is going to be doing a front side spin. Right there you see a wrapped heel side five. Great stuff from Elisa Piana putting together a lot of different 540 variations mm. and then trying to go indie tantrum to blind. That was going to be a nail in the coffin right there. Unfortunately, coming up a hair short, but a great job up to that point for Elisa Piana. So seven clean tricks for the Italian as she tries to top the score of 81.67, put up by the leader right now, Megan Ethel of USA. Elisa Piana with a good run as she comes to an end just before the finish line, just unable to navigate that final trick and put it into the bank. So she is done for the day. She will sit and wait and see what the judges think. But clean on the first pass, she comes back for only fall at the very end. Yeah, Elisa really did a great job getting things done in pass number one. Landing things relatively clean. She did have that case of the wake on her heel side five, but still got some big tricks in. And right there, you see that indie back roll right in with the rat heel five. That one very clean. And then trying to get that indie tantrum, mm. rotating that blind 180 right before she hits the water, just coming up a hair short. So waiting to see what the judges think of her score. Remember, Hinata Yoshihara had a 70.67, and Elise Leroy had a 58.33. Those are the three who have completed so far. That's the top three, obviously, with Megan Ethel leading the way. 81.67 is what everyone will be trying to top to put themselves into first place. So that's four athletes up. We still have five more to go with this nine-woman pro final, and it'll be Zara Kell, the last athlete to go on the day. But, man, we have got so much talent still to come. So if you're on the dock, you've already put your scoring mark, you're going to think, okay, I feel good about it, but how good can you really feel knowing that the talent is still to come? Yeah, you know, these riders in the final – they are seated in order based on their results in the semifinals. So the last riders off the dock were the top qualifiers coming into this final round. So as the list goes on, it goes down to the women that rode the best on the day before. So as these scores come in, the riders feel good about what they put down, but they know that the women who have been riding on top of their game are still to come. The Animus now out of Argentina. You know she's gonna go huge, right? Yeah, this is huge. I love watching Eugenia de Armas ride. She's out of Buenos Aires, Argentina. And a long time ago, she became the very first female rider to ever land a double back roll behind the boat. She did it when she was just a teenager. And now, in her 20s, man, she has really come into herself. And man, every time she hits the water, it is poetry in motion. She is such a smooth rider. 
and Eugenia has been riding so, so well this year. Well, before you hit, you get in, we can tell you that Alicia Fiana's score comes in as a 65.67. That has her in third place overall. 65.67 for the Italian Fiana. Yeah, right now, Megan Ethel's still sitting on top with that score of an 81.67. And right now, Eugenia de Armas, a.k.a. Huge, is coming into the course and they call her huge, not just because it's the first part of her name, but because this girl blasts off the wake. She goes absolutely huge out there for sure. She's starting things off, getting wrapped up, and she's not going to waste any time. The second she crosses that start, of course, buoy, she's getting after it. And huge, going upside down and all the way around it with that wrapped KGB right out of the gate. Now back in on the toes with the dum-dum, or excuse me, the tootsie roll, toe side front roll, back side 180, landing it clean, riding away smooth, then going mute grab, heel side, front side 540, not grabbing it as long as she would have liked, but still reaching down, touching the board, adding her own unique style to that trick, and then backing it up with a switch 540 it was a wrapped one she got the grab that time and Eugenia de Armas doing a phenomenal job on pass number one a little bit of a fist pump there at the end of pass number one let the judges know yeah that just stomped that let's look at it one more time and she was clean on pass one love the wrap up love the pass over just launched it cleared the wake no problem whatsoever and a little emphasis there yeah, just a couple weeks ago at the U.S. National Championships, Eugenia ended up on the podium for the pro women. She got third place, and I know that she really wants to step up another rung on that pro women's podium. Could this be her time to do it? Well, there's no better time than now. Starting off with that toe side, front side 540. Oh, oh no. Just going down on that indie tantrum to blind. Taking a hard fall, but thankfully raising her hand, letting the judges and the boat crew know that she's A-OK. -okay. That was her sixth trick, so she's going to have plenty of time, probably to at least get two more in, Mark, if the boat planes quickly. And of course, why wouldn't it? The Super Aeronautic G23 does its job. Here it is one more time. Yeah, check it out. Just... Coming up a hair short on the rotation. It looks like she was edging just a little too hard away from the wave, catching that heel side edge, and unfortunately not able to recover. Now, as you mentioned, Todd, fortunately for her, only her first fall, so she is going to get a pickup. She should have enough time to get definitely one, maybe two tricks if she hustles on this second pass. We're probably not going to get the three. It's going to be really tough to get three tricks, I think. Now, Eugenia fully capable of putting it down, but she is a rider that likes to take her time setting up. And so knowing Eugenia's style, I think it's going to be really tough for her to get three tricks out of this run with the fall. There's the bat wing gliding it way out there. She is hustling, but right there you see Stalling, just taking her time. She wants to get a big trick, and just like that, the Moby Dick, she is going to hustle, and you see, just getting a double grab, heel side 180, sneaking one in right there. Eugenia doing a great job. She did get eight tricks in. Now, one of them being that heel side, front side right. 180. Not the ideal scenario, but she did get the Moby Dick. She started with a KGB as well as a Tootsie Roll. So, Eugenia doing a Really, really strong showing with some big tricks out here in the pro women's final. And a smile on her face. There it is one more time. And man, she really did. You talked about it, Mark. She had to hustle because she just did not have the real estate she was looking for. But her early pass was so strong. But as you pointed out, coming back, there was this fall, almost fall. She just had to just move so quickly and just a couple stop tricks like that, double grab, 
180. Yeah, what are you going to do? Yeah, and she knows it. You know, Eugenia all smiles out there. She's always having a good time. She knows that she was rushed to get in one more trick right there. Fortunately, she got it in. That's the good news. The bad news, it probably wasn't the trick right. that she wanted. Well, the mark to be 81.67 put up by Megan Ethel. That has her in first place. Second place being held down by Hinata Yoshihara of 70.67. In third place right now being held down by Elisa Piana of Italy with a 65.67. Means we've got four more athletes to go before a champion is crowned here in Lago Azul, Portugal. Well, as we wait for the score for Eugenia to come in, you know, the women also chasing that Wakeboard World Series title. It has been an absolute nail biter this year. The top three women in the Wakeboard World Series are so close to each other. The top two being Megan Ethel who's currently in the lead, and Zara Kell out of Australia, who's going to be last off the dock, battling it out for that overall Wakeboard World Series pro women's title. Score Definitely. coming in. Yeah, we got scores, Mark. Sorry. We have scores for you. He did Giannis of Argentina. It's a 75.67, 75.67. For Yuhimia, she goes into second place behind Megan Ethel, who leads with an 81.67. Fellow American Jamie Lopina, she is now out on the boat getting ready, and she is in the water. So 81.67 puts you into first place. If you can top that score, Jamie, you go to the top. Yeah, well, J-Lo definitely capable of putting that score down. You know, just earlier this year, at the Nautique Moomba Masters down in Australia, the very first stop of the Wakeboard World Series, Jamie Lapina became the very first female rider to land a heelside 720 behind the boat in a contest pass. She has been riding so, so well lately, and hopefully we get to see her in full force right here as she enters into pass number one. Well, J. Lo, Jamie Lopina, starting things off with a toe side approach, going up and over the top with that indie toe side front roll, stomping down a great invert, and now back in on her heels. There's the backside 360, slow, smooth rotation, and now back in. On her dominant heels, there's the heel side, front side, 540. Now in on her switch heels, there's the nose grab heel side, 540. So back-to-back -back heel fives from Jamie Lopina to finish off that first pass. So far, things are looking really strong. Let's hope she can keep it going and keep it flowing into her second pass. Right there, you see that second heel five. Jamie, such a strong rider, not only a highly decorated boat rider, also very talented, highly decorated on the cable as well. But right now, she is wrapped up in that backside direction as she goes upside down with the KG. Oh. Oh man, almost she saves it. Almost going down right there. Jamie Lapina hanging on by the skin of her teeth. And then going toe side to front side 540, asking for a bit of a speed adjustment. Looks like she was casing the weight on those first two tricks. And then coming yeah. into the scarecrow, showing a bit of frustration right there, not getting the pop that she wanted. And now back in. On her opposite toes. Oh no. Just getting pitched right there. Not able to lock it down. An unfortunate end 
to Jamie Lapina's run. She started off so, so strong. Yeah, she was looking it. really good. The first pass was so much better than the second pass. Yeah, unfortunately, it just didn't come together for her on pass number two. You can see right here at the end of her first pass, putting down those heel fives, everything was looking great. Then going into her second pass, it looks like she just was going a hair slow. Maybe that headwind coming down the course on her second pass affecting her a little bit. Not able to get that pop that she needed and coming up short on those first three tricks definitely compiled into the frustration that Jamie was feeling during that second pass. So Jamie makes the long, slow ride back to the dock, and first pass was a thing of beauty. Second pass, she seemed to struggle, multiple tastings, and you saw it, Mark. She did ask for a speed increase on there, but just did not come soon enough, and she was unable to navigate that final trick. So not sure she's going to be able to top Megan Ethel's 81.67, but we'll see what the judges thought, especially the first six tricks were strong. She's trying to get anything above a 65.67, which would put her into a temporary, a temporary podium position. So as Jamie Lapina makes her way back to the dock, we get a good look at Mackenzie McCarthy. She will be the next competitor to go. She represents the final three, three to go. So a 50, a 5-0 even score for Jamie Lapina of the USA. So it'll be Mackenzie McCarthy, Mary Morgan Howell, and then Zara Kell will be the final competitor, two Americans and an Australian, excuse me, two Australians and an American. Yeah, Mackenzie McCarthy out of Australia, a very talented young Australian rider. Just recently decided to make the move to America and spend endless summers going back and forth between the American summer and the Australian summer. And man, all that time on the water has really paid off for Kinsey as she is just elevating her game higher and higher. She is a very strong rider. She rides with a ton of power and she has got some big tricks in her quiver that we're gonna see if she pulls out here in the finals. All right, quick reminder, it's Megan Ethel of USA that leads right now with an 81.67. Eugenia Giannis sits in second place and Hinata Yoshihara sitting in third place as Australian Mackenzie McCarthy is now on course. Well, she's edging out to edge back in. On a toe side approach, Kenzie McCarthy going way up and over on that scarecrow. The toe side front roll, front side 180, landing it clean and riding away smooth. There's the toe side front side 540. Nice job. Two solid tricks in for Mackenzie. Now looking for her third trick of her first pass. There's the Tootsie Roll, awesome job, perfectly executed. And now down here at the end of her first pass, going heel side, upside down, and all the way around with that handle pass, KGB, a very big trick for Mackenzie McCarthy. So pass one is successful, McCarthy. Now she'll make the turn and come back for pass number two, knowing that she needs better. Then that 81.6 second, which Megan Ethel put up on the third rider, and a great opening pass for the young McCarthy out of Australia. Yeah, the 
The highlight of that first pass was her handle pass KGB. A lot of the pro women opting to do wrapped KGBs where they come in with the handle behind their back. Mackenzie McCarthy, such a strong rider, able to pass the handle on it and make it look good. Starting off pass number two strong with a toe side back roll to Revert, grabbing it all the way through. There's the whirly oh. bird. Oh, no. And just not getting the distance that she needed right there. It looks like she had decent pop, but unfortunately came up a little short and ended up casing the wake upon landing. So Mackenzie McCarthy now, let's take a look at this one more time. Up, over, just comes up way short of the other side of that wake. Yeah, such a difficult place to land. You know, some riders, able to spot that top of the wake and power through on the landing, but where she ended up putting her board down, nearly impossible to be able to ride away from that. Well, the good news is she is outside the three-quarter buoy, so she will get the pickup, but as we've seen before, Mark, she's going to have to work quick. And Mackenzie McCarthy is up and riding. So as soon as that beautiful super aeronautic G23 gets planned, she will go to work. Yeah, Mackenzie back up on the water, looking to squeeze a couple more tricks out of here. She is going to hustle for it. <clears throat> There's the heel side, front side, 540. And the Moby did right there at the end, trying to put it down. Unfortunately, could not ride away. And that's going to do it for a great job from Mackenzie McCarthy. We're going to see how the judges end up organizing her along with the rest of the pro women that have already ridden. But that is such a difficult situation. Mackenzie McCarthy was so close to that outside three-quarter buoy, but she does get the pickup. She had to hustle to get it in. Maybe working a little quicker than she wanted to, but unable to complete that final maneuver, losing control of the handle. So, not sure that's going to top Megan Athol, the current leader score of 81.67. And with two athletes to go, it looks like Megan Athol has secured herself at least a podium position. As we look at some of the highlights from Australia's Mackenzie McCarthy one more time. Yeah, you see, there's that handle pass KGB from Mackenzie. Definitely the highlight of her run. And right here, hustling after that fall, landing the five and trying to get that Moby mm. Dick. She got the handle, but unfortunately, just not quite enough pop to finish the rotation early enough for her to confidently land. So we'll see where the judges put the Australian Mackenzie McCarthy with two athletes to go in the women's final. And then a champion will be crowned. We will have Mary Morgan Howell of the USA and, of course, Zara Kell of Australia will have the final say. And there she is, Mary Morgan Howell, on board, heading out for her run. Four tricks down, four tricks back, eight tricks in total, two passes, as she tries to top fellow American Megan Ethel right now with an 81.67. That is the mark to beat. Man, we got some great action on Lago Zul today for you. We're going right into the pro men's final, and what a set we have. Six men ready to do battle for a world title before we get to the junior pro women final, which will come up after the men. It's a busy morning today after yesterday's storm at the end of the day. We're regrouping, and we're getting this thing done on Championship Sunday here at the Nautic WWA Wakeboard World Championship presented by GM Marine. 
Well, there she is, naughty team athlete, Mary Morgan Howell. You can see just why everybody loves her so much. She's thanking the drivers before she even rides. She is such a sweetheart coming out of the deep south of the United States, down in Dothan, Alabama. She just started her sophomore year at Rollins College. And man, this girl, not only a sweetheart, not only a highly intelligent student, but man, she rips. There is a reason she's going second to last off the dock. It's because she won her semifinal round before this. She's the top qualifier out of her heat that's going into this final round of action. Mary Morgan Howell at home behind the Super Aeronautique G23. This is what she rides and trains behind back home in the USA. And man, she is feeling primed and ready to go right here. All eyes on the water as Mary Morgan Howell comes in for her first pass, starting off with a heel side approach and going nose grab, heel side back roll out of the gate. Now back in on the toes. There's the Tootsie Roll, landing it clean, riding away smooth. Mary Morgan setting a great pace right here. There's the handle pass KGB. We saw it with Mackenzie McCarthy. And now Mary Morgan Howell, another athlete, choosing to do that handle pass, the harder version of the KGB, oh. and landing a promo <laughs> to boot. Mary Morgan Howell, a little low on the landing, but riding away from the Chromo. Those are two of her biggest tricks, the KGB and the Chromo, putting them down at the end of her first pass. She is all smiles, feeling great as she is coming around to get ready for pass number two. So pass number two for the young American, knowing the mark to be put up by fellow American, Megan Ethel's 81.67. She's got four tricks now in this final pass here in the women's pro final. All right, pass number two coming at you. And Mary Morgan going handle pass, roll to blind right there out of the gate. Another very difficult, very technical trick from the young lady out of Dothan, Alabama. Then putting that board way out behind her on that off axis. Toe side, front side, 540. There's a heel side, front side, three. And now Mary Morgan, one last trick down here at the end. She's wrapped up in the backside direction. She wants to get eight tricks down. And right there, a toe side, backside, 360. Mary Morgan pointing to the sky. Absolutely awesome job from the young lady out of the United States. Give it up for Nauti Team Rider. Mary Morgan Howell. Mary Morgan Howell with a great run here in the women's pro final. I have a feeling this is what they would say down south. Roll tight. And she did just that. Look at this. Yeah, right there you see a very strong trick right there. Followed in by that <laughs> promo. The toe side front roll with a full rotating front side 360. Mary Morgan Howell packing in the tricks making it happen when it counts here in the pro women's final. And she was smooth. Other than that slight bobble on the sit, that was a clean, clean run for Mary Morgan Howe. So she has set the stage for the final competitor. It'll be Zara Kelt of Australia. And waiting for her score to come in. Still the mark to beat. Put up by our third athlete in the women's pro final, Megan Ethel, an 81.67. Mackenzie McCarthy scored a 68. So that has her currently in fourth place. And waiting for Mary Morgan House score to drop. And then Zara Kell, she'll know exactly, Mark, what she needs to do out on the water here at the 2023 Nati WWA Wakeboard World Championships presented by GM Marine.
Mazara Kell, now of Australia, making her way out onto the course. She'll have four tricks on pass number one, four tricks on pass number two, and then it'll be in the judges' hands to decide who is the 2023 world champion. 78.67. That is a score for Mary Morgan House. 78.67. And that will put her currently into second place overall behind Megan Ethel's 81.67. Yeah, definitely big scores from those top two ladies, Megan Ethel and Mary Morgan Howell, doing an awesome job as they put down eight solid tricks, but there is still one rider left to go. The young lady out of Australia, Zara Kell, has been on an absolute tear this year. And all of it coming after a three year hiatus. Back in 2020, Zara Kell took a break from riding. You know, she had been a professional wakeboarder on the summer season and a professional snowboarder on the winter season. So this girl was always on a board since she was five years old training at the professional level and eventually it just got too much she said i need to back off i need to go take some time to just be me and that's exactly what she did now thankfully earlier this year she decided that she wanted to come back to wakeboarding and ever since then she has looked stronger than ever zara kill won the nautique moomba masters the first stop of the wakeboard world series earlier this year and then just a couple months ago took the win at the u.s national championships down in georgia and taking two wins this year on the wakeboard world series has put her in a very tight running along with megan ethel for that top spot for the overall series win so this is it, the final competitor in the pro women final, the mark to be 81.67. That would put her into the lead if she could top that score. She needs better than a 78.67 to move into second place, and she's going to need better than a 75.67 to get herself on the podium. But I have a feeling, honestly, Mark, that Zara Kelp, all she's considering about is her run, getting clean, pass one, clean, pass two, let the judges decide who had the best tricks today on Lago Zool. Well, it looks like we are ready to rock with Zara Kell, the 20-year-old out of Sydney, Australia, looking to take her final run here in Portugal. The last rider off the dock here in the Pro Women's Final, the top qualifier out of all these ladies to go. Yesterday, she rode so, so well. And we're hoping to see a repeat performance today. She's got everything to gain right here. And Zara Kell getting turned around and ready to enter into the course for pass number one. All eyes on the water as she gets ready, gets set to go into this first pass. Well, here she is, starting off toe side approach. Big trick right there with the Tootsie Roll, landing high on the wake, perfect landing down the transition as Zara then comes in for the Whirly Bird, going upside down and all the way around with that Tantrum Olay 360. Then a heel side, front side, 540, mixing in the spins with the technical inverse. You know the judges are going to take note of that. And then back in on her regular heels, there's the heel side, back side, 360. Zara Kill taking a slash at the weight, feeling good as she should 
after that first pass of four tricks. So she'll make the turn, come back. Pass number two is down to the final four tricks. One more time. As she gets low, she pops up. Beautiful landing. Yeah, well, she's not done yet. Only halfway home to that stand-up run. And Zara Kell coming into her second pass, looking to continue on with a fantastic run so far, setting her edge in on her toes. There's the Dum Dum adding an extra 180 to the Tootsie Roll. The toe side front roll with a backside 360. Awesome stuff. And there's the handle pass roll to blind for Zara. Another. Big technical. Invert, making sure that she. Invert, making sure that she. Question now is: Is it better than eighty-one verse six? Making seven. sure that she. Question now is: Is it better than eighty-one verse six? Making seven. sure that she. Question now is: Is it better than eighty-one verse six? Making seven. sure that she. Question now is: Is it better than eighty-one verse six? Making seven. sure that she. Question now is: Is it better than eighty-one verse six? Making seven. sure that she. Question now is: Is it better than eighty-one verse six? Making seven. sure that she. Question now is: Is it better than eighty-one verse six?
apologies. But uh, Lago Zula is the site. Everyone's been raving about the conditions, the course, and the country itself. Great people, great location, great food. Can't ask for much more from the World Championships here at the Nautique WWA Wakeboard World Championships presented by GM Marine. All right, so that's one down, five to go. Six-man final mark. These are the heavy hitters. Yeah, and in this final round of action, we actually get a slightly different format for the pro men. Now, everything will remain the same during their contest pass. They will still get four tricks down and four tricks back. They will still get one fall with one pickup. But then if they make it to the end of their run, they will have the opportunity for a double up. Now, a double up, for those of you unfamiliar with the sport, is where the boat will come down the course, perform a full circle, and then cross over its own rollers. When it's crossing over the rollers, the rider will time their takeoff of hitting the wake with hitting one of those rollers, thus doubling the size of the wake, doubling the amplitude, and putting together some of the biggest tricks in the sport of wakeboarding. So right now you see Luca Kidd making it to the end of his second pass. He gets to choose what direction he wants the double up in. They can get it to the left or to the right. And Luca choosing that right hand double up as the Super Aeronautique G23 completes a full rotation. Luca Kidd up the rollers that are about to come his way and right here you see going huge oh. on that backside zero going backside three rewind three unfortunately going down but a very exciting trick to watch and a great showing from the young man out of great britain luca kid so luca kid represents the first athlete of six to complete his run in the final, getting the double up, which Mark alluded to. It's, it's, like, it's like bonus TV. It's, it's both that. Absolutely. You can see some of the highlights from Luca's contest pass right here. A great mixture of inverts and spins, even getting that mute half cab double back roll right there. Luca putting on a show. He got seven tricks in his contest pass definitely going to be a good score but without that eight trick right. and without the double up it's hard to say that it's going to be a great score all indications point that we will probably have one of the six athletes do a complete run four down four up and then a double up and that will probably be where the champion comes from so for luca kid he sets the table and he is complete waiting for a score to drop. It will be a 77-0 for Luca Kidd, the man who has tamed the Thames. Yeah, you can see Luca feeling exhausted. You know, he is so hyped up this morning. He was so excited to be in the semifinals and in the finals, and now feeling that adrenaline leaving his body, he can finally breathe a sigh of relief. And a score of a 70 is a good score. Right. Luca should definitely be happy with that. Uh, not the perfect run that he wanted, but a great showing from Luca Kidd. Moving on now to Tyler Hyam, young man originally from Bend, Oregon, western part of the USA, finds himself now in Portugal on Laga Ozul with an opportunity to do something special here in the men's pro final. Yeah, Ty High has been on an absolute tear this year. He has been riding so, so good. And Tyler Hyam, one of those riders that has so much style that all the other riders have come on. This guy has very Tyler Hyam, a 
past Rookie of the Year award winner, a past Trick of the Year award winner. This year, won the Pro Tour overall. And now we're going to see if he can become a world champion to boot. So Tyler Hyam on the water. He just saw one of his best friends, Luca Kidd, go out and ride. And here in the finals, even though these guys are close friends, man, they are here to win. Everyone wants to go home on top of the podium. There's no friends in the finals. And Tyler Hyam looking to put together a strong showing here in Portugal. So the mark to beat, Luca Kidd, 70. With five more athletes to go, it'll be Tyler Hyam, Massimiliano Pifferetti, Nick Rapa, Sam Brown, and Corey Tuniston. Ty High starting things off wrapped and going tail grab on that 3 2 1. The heel side 360 rewind to a 180. There's the switch, heel side, front side 720, grabbing it clean, riding away smooth. So far, so good for Tyler Hyam. There's the heel side, front side, 900, two and a half rotations from Ty. And now down here towards the end, going big melon mobe right there. Starting switch, landing switch, and doing the back roll with a front side 360. He adds so much style to that switch mobe. Poking out that melon grab as hard as he can. You know the judges are going to reward him for that. For a great trick on pass number one, Hyam, man, landing's right in the sweet spot, too, as he makes his turn, and he is now set to go for pass number two. Yeah, Tyler Hyam definitely feeling good about his first pass, wanting to keep it going into pass number two, but he knows he cannot leave any question to the judges. He's got to go for broke right here, and he's starting off going two times around with that mute half cab double back roll starting switch landing regular doing two back rolls and a 180 in between there's the kgb 540 a back roll with a backside 540 attached to it <clears throat> now tyler coming in toe side backside 720 he has taken that spin to win mentality and Tyler down here mm. towards the end. Oh no. Oh. Trying to go with a double indie tantrum. Unfortunately, not getting the pop that he needed. Taking a hard fall. Looks like he's okay. But unfortunately, not the end that Tyler Hyam wanted. So here it is one more time. Some great maneuvers, some great landings. Obviously, first pass mark better than the second pass. Not the way he wanted to end his final run. Yeah. <clears throat> Tyler putting in some awesome tricks there. You know, he got a great mixture of spins and flips. And then right here, you see he was trying to go two times around Ooh. on that double indie tantrum. Unfortunately, just Slipping the grab, not able to get the rotation he needs. Now, fortunately for Ty, that was only his first fall. So now he's going to be taken down to the end of the course. They are going to let everything settle down, and then they'll come back with an opportunity for Tyler to hit the double up. Much different conditions today than we had yesterday. A lot more sun yesterday and wind today. Not as much sun, but not as much wind. And, of course, the big storm we probably have already heard about that came through at the end of yesterday's competition did some damage to the staging area and some of the equipment. So that's why we're on limited amount of video and audio. We apologize for that in advance. We're glad to be bringing you pictures. Nonetheless, the 2023 Nautique WWA Wakeboard World Championships presented by GM Marine. We're in the midst of the men's pro final. Luca Kidd scored a 70, the first athlete to go. This is Tyler Hyam out of Bend, Oregon, as he gets set for the double up. His run is complete. This is going to be huge. Now, this is something, Mark, put a little added pressure on him. He gets to the double up. He's going to need something big. Most importantly, he's going to need to land it. 
Yeah, absolutely. Ty knows that because he only got seven tricks total, he has got to do something and something big off the double up. And Tyler is fully capable of that. He's one of the few riders that has done a double back mob, two flips with a full 360. Tyler fully capable of that. He's He can do 1080s. It really could be just about anything out there. Now, the only thing you need to know is that Ty goes high. <laughs> so Tyler Heim waiting for that Super Aeronautique G23 to turn around and cross over its own rollers right here. You see that happening where the wakes and the rollers will converge. That is where Tyler wants to meet up. They call it a double up because you get double the amplitude. And right now, here we go. Tyler wrapped up as he comes into the rollers. Going nice. Heel side, backside, 900. A very difficult, very technical trick. Tyler doing it with ease. Awesome job. That is exactly what he needed after missing one of the tricks in his past. So I am now waiting for his score successful on the double up. Seven hits on his run in the final, looking to top a 70 put up by his friend and fellow competitor, Luca Kidd, out of Great Britain. That was big. The fans loved that double up. Yeah, every time the riders hit the roller just right, man, everyone on shore erupts because they go so much higher. You know, you just imagine having the Super Aeronautique G23 wake which is already incredibly large and then matching that up with one of the rollers as it's coming at you you know it sets the stage for an immense yeah. amount of air wrapped so he lives up. up to his reputation let's look at one more time yeah here's that double up as tie high rollers stomps down that heel side, back side, 900, Tyler, two and a half rotations in the back side direction, doing it with his dominant foot forward. Absolutely awesome from Tyler Hyam. So the next athlete to go out, Massey Pifferetti, pizza boy, getting himself into the final. Everyone always liked watching him compete, and he is in these European waters, so we should expect nothing but excellence out of Massa, Massimiliano, as his mother likes to call him. Yeah, Massey the pizza boy Pifferetti. You know, he is easily the best rider to ever come out of the country of Italy. And he has been raising up this next generation of young Italian riders. You see the score right there from Tyler Hyam at 81.67. That'll put him above Luca Kidd. I don't know if it's going to be enough right. to stay on top. But right now, as it stands, Tyler Hyam in that top spot. Four more world-class athletes to go here at the Nautique WWA Wakeboard World Championships presented by GM Marine. Glad to be with you here on Laga Azul outside of Jera do Zere in Portugal. Todd Harris, Mark Hager, and Kurt Criddle with you on a somewhat overcast day, but the temperatures are very comfortable. Everyone's turned out to see the world's best compete here to see who will take home the world title. Massey Pifferetti now getting set to go. So we've seen a young man from Great Britain. We've seen American Tyler Hyam, and now it's the Italian, his opportunity to show us what he's got. Yeah, well, Massey Pipparetti, one of the riders' riders. Everyone loves watching this dude ride. He has got so much style. He just drips 
with style. Everything he does is so, so cool. When Matty is on the water, all the other riders go down to the shore to see what he is going to do. He is a past European champion. And earlier this year, took the win at the Nautique Masters, the second stop of the Wakeboard World Series. So Massey definitely still in contention for that overall Wakeboard World Series title as well as being here in the finals looking for a world championship. There's the nose grab Chromo 540 as Massey starts stuff off. And now that classic one-handed cut from Massey as he does the blind Pete Rose the toe side back roll, reaching all the way across his body, getting the cradle grab, and then doing the backside 360 to boot. Mm. There's the KGB 540. Massey Pifferetti is feeling it right now. Down here at the end, nose grab, heel side, front side 720, an extra, little extra marinara sauce <laughs> on that one. Absolutely awesome from Massimiliano Pifferetti in pass number one. So the Italian looking very clean on pass number one. Great maneuvers there. Very clean on the landing, showing all kinds of style and creativity. This is the last bit of our Italian flair because after this, it is all Australians. Let me look at the highlights one more time. It's all Australians to wrap up the final with wrap up Brown and Tunison still to come. All right. Well, Massey locking in four tricks on pass number one, looking to do the same as he enters into his second pass, and he's wrapped up toe side, backside for that one-to-one, -one, grabbing Melon all the way through it, and then back in, going with the toe side, backside 540. A ton of style on that toe back five, and now Massey up and over with the rewind on the Tootsie Roll, a toe side front roll, Backside 180 and then rewinding out of it. A super hard maneuver. Not sure how he does it. But oh! He lands. And then does the mute half cap double back roll. Massimiliano Pifferetti, an extra slice of pizza for the pizza boy right there. Getting away after a butt check on that double back roll. But man, he stood up and now Massey Pifferetti has eight tricks on his scorecard as he goes into the double up. He's got to be feeling great. So an 81.67 is the mark to beat put up by American Tyler Hyam. Luca Kidd sits in second place and Massey Pifferetti now with an opportunity to really boost his score up if he can land this double up. Yeah, Massey Pifferetti looking solid so far. You know, it wasn't the perfect run. He did have a bobble in there on that mute half cab double back roll. Landed a little bit low. He took a buck check, but he got back up on his feet. So although he won't get the full score for that trick, he will still be rewarded, and that puts him with eight tricks on his scorecard, something no other athlete in the finals has done yet. So after a short break, it's Pifferetti now looking for something special here on the double up here in Laga Azul. Final opportunity to press, impress the judges and put himself in a position. Big enough score is going to put himself in a podium position, but as we've said before, there are three world-class Australians still to come to wrap up the men's pro final here. Nick Rappa, Sam Brown, and Corey Tunison will have the final say. Still the potential of an Australian sweep here in Portugal. All right, the question for you, Mark, is, is there everyone come into this knowing what they need? Asking for a little crowd support there. Massey, getting ready. Do they all have a stock or a go-to trick on the double up that they've got locked in? You know, Massey, one of the few riders that has 
won a double up contest. You know, Parks Bonifay, one of the wakeboard legends, yeah. hosts a double up contest every year. And Massey Bifferetti has won Parks' double or nothing double up contest before. So he is very comfortable at hitting double ups. He has got a huge quiver of tricks that he can reach into at any time. And you never know what this guy is going to throw. But he feeds off of the crowd's enthusiasm. There is a huge Italian fan base here traveling up to Portugal just to watch Massey ride. And now he's coming in a toe side edge, going massive oh. with that toe side five, two, three. Absolutely incredible for Massey as he performs a awesome trick, lands it clean, and he is definitely going to be happy with that. He's better than 81.67 to move into the lead ahead of American Tyler Hyam. And I'll tell you what, by virtue of this double up, look at this. Ah, oh, yeah, this there's, is his run. There's the KGB 5, followed in by the Kill 7 at the end of pass number one. Then you take it back into the second pass. A super smooth, super stylish Massey showed up this morning. And man, he has been really, really looking great. There's the bobble on that mute double cap roll. And then right here, Massey going all the way across. Almost turning a toe side five before rewinding it on that toe side three to one. Killer stuff from Massey Pifferetti. I would predict that that is going to be a high score, probably in the mid 80s for Massey Pifferetti. But the judges see mm. it all. You know, they are nitpicking every single detail of these riders. And from the boat, they have the best perspective from anyone out here at the event site. So waiting to see what the judges think. Will that be better than 81.67? And will it put the Italian ahead of the American, Tyler Hyam, who currently holds down the top spot with Luca Kidd holding on to second right now with a 70? Yeah, everyone on the edge of their seat waiting for the Pizza Boys score to come in. The judges' pencils are smoking right now, writing down all those maneuvers. And man, what an exciting day out here in the pro men's finals here at the 2023 Nautique WWA Wakeboard World Championships presented by GM Marine. With Massey's run in the books, we are halfway through this pro men's final. We've seen three riders go, and we still have three riders left on the docket. Todd, as you mentioned, all three of the top qualifiers in this final are coming from Australia. The Australians have been so dominant in the sport of wakeboarding over the last decade. They have been incredibly difficult to beat. And these last three riders are no exception to that. They have got some big tricks. They are super consistent and they have won a lot of championships in the past. So it'll be Nick Rapp out of Australia, Sam Brown of Australia, and Corey Tunison, also of Australia, that will have the final say here in the men's pro as we still wait for the score for Massey Pifferetti. All right, well, the throttles go down on the Super Aeronautique G23, and Nick Rappa goes up. A young man 
originally out of Hawkesbury, New South Wales, Australia, but recently making the move up to Sydney. And man, this guy has done it all and won it all. He is a past U.S. national champion, a past world champion, a past wakeboard world series champion. He has every title under his belt. And when he is in a final, all the other competitors know that Nick is going to get on that podium no matter what. Man, he is so strong of a rider, super consistent. And right here, you see him going with that Switch Mute Mobe 540. Nick has been absolutely automatic all week long. We're going to hope that it continues as he lands the heel side, front side 900, two and a half full rotations right there off of his heel side edge then back up and in the mute half cab double back roll two flips one trick awesome job from nick rapa as he closes in at the end of pass number one with a massive indie grab moby dick way out into the flats nobody does that trick quite like nick rapa rapa carrying that one deep as he makes some adjustments down on the binding Ask for a little speed decrease as they make the turn. So four up, four down. He'll make the turn for pass number two. We'll see what he can pull off here. But man, you look at some of these replays. He is just textbook. Yeah, Nick Rappa is a machine out there. And if anyone has an error, Nick Rappa will take full advantage of their mistakes. Right now, coming in on a toe side approach to kick off his second pass. Nick going toe side, front side, 900, landing perfectly in that transition. He is absolutely textbook right now. And then going double indie tantrum, such a difficult double flip, but Nick Rappa executes it very, very well. Back in, going crail grab on that blind Pete, reaching all the way across his body having his backhand grab the nose of his board and then doing the toe side back roll with a backside 360 degree rotation and then to end it off an indie backside 720 nick rapa getting eight tricks and not just any eight tricks eight really really fantastic tricks <laughs> <laughs> well nick rappa putting it together when it all matters most and now we're gonna drop him down and wait for the rollers to settle before we give him the double up to cap off his run now what we're looking at is tyler hyam got seven tricks but he also landed a double up and a big double up it was a backside 900. massey pifferetti got eight tricks he had a little bobble in there but he also got a double up nick rapa just put down eight tricks without any bobbles and he is waiting to get his double up served up to him right here on Lago Azul in Portugal. I can't wait to see what Nick Rappa is going to do. Still waiting on the scores for Massey Pifferetti. Tyler Hyam has the high mark right now with an 81.67. Luca Kidd with a 70 weight for Pifferetti's score. Nick Rappa, to Mark's point, man, he was strong. Eight tricks, four up, four down, clean on both passes, and now the double up coming. Yeah, so Nick being third to last off the dock, he just put together a solid eight tricks. He is now having to calculate, does he put down a safety double up or does he try and put a nail in the coffin, throttle down on this double up and put down a banger of a trick? He can close the door right here if it's something incredible, but it is a high risk, high reward situation 
for Nick, knowing that there are two riders left to go. So the question is, Mark, is it better to have a clean pass one and two and miss on the double up or seven tricks on your passes and a successful double up? You know, I, obviously, ideally, you want a clean pass and you want a big double up. But they are playing the mental math right now, doing the gymnastics of how do I get myself into the top spot without risking that fall. And Nick Rappa going into the double up, absolutely massive oh, right yeah. there on the heel side, front side, 720. That was one of the biggest heel sevens we have ever seen. And Nick Rappa landing it clean as he drops out of the sky. Absolutely awesome. He is stoked, whipping into shore. Let's check out some of the highlights of his run. You see that mute half cab double back roll, and then way out into the flats on that indie Moby Dick. There's a toe side 900, and another big highlight to his run, that double indie tantrum. Nick Rappa definitely throttled down in that run check it out here's that double up blasting off the roller getting the melon grab and then going two times around probably 12 15 feet in the air right there from nick rappa as he rotates two times grabs the handle and lands perfectly on the transition of the wake so waiting for scores for both Pifferetti and Nick Rappa. And Pifferetti's score comes in. It's 87. 87 for Pifferetti. So that puts him into the lead. So that is the mark to beat. And I got to think that Nick Rappa's score is going to be just ahead of that. Just by virtue of what he did in that double up mark. That was stellar. Yeah. I would assume that based on that run and the double up that Nick, Nick Rappa just put down, that we could assume a score in the low 90s. Ooh. There it is. You see a 93.00 giving Nick a comfortable lead over Massey Pifferetti's 87. You know, I 100% agree with that score. I think the judges are definitely on the mark right now. Nick was nearly flawless in his two passes of tricks and with the double up on top of that man he's getting rewarded handsomely for exactly what he did so nick rapa we can safely say will be on the podium at the very least as he is thrown down a 93 with just two athletes to go in the men's final it'll be sam brown the penultimate athlete and then corey tunis and both of australia they will be the last to go here in the competition here in laga azul Sam Brown getting loose, getting ready for his final run, and then a potential huge double up to wrap things up for him with Corey Tuniston waiting in the wings. Yeah, Sam Brown, the young man out of Thurlmere, Australia. He is a absolute freak of nature on the water. This guy grabs his board in ways that I can't bend standing up straight on the ground. He is made of rubber the way that he stretches and reaches to grab his board in unique ways. He has got so much style. But along with that style, Sam Brown has some of the most technical tricks in the sport. He is always a force to be reckoned with. And man, here in the Wakeboard World Series overall, he is doing really, really well. He's ended up in a lot of finals this year. He's ended up on the podium two times, but always in that second place position. Sam Brown has yet to win one of the Wakeboard World Series events. 
And so it would be an absolute dream for him to come to Portugal and end up on top of the podium. He definitely has the ability to do it, but can he make it happen when it counts most? So we're down to the final two athletes. It'll be Sam Brown and then Corey Tunison. We know that the leader of the clubhouse right now is Nick Rappa with a 93. Massimiliano Pifferetti sits in second place, and Tyler Hyam currently in third with an 81.67. All right, well, Sam Brown entering into the course, getting ready for his first look at the finals. And here he goes, edging in on his heels, reaching all the way across his body, going with that seatbelt style method grab on that switch mode five and then coming back in with the moby dick five sam brown getting twisted up but man executing some incredible maneuvers there's a double grab kill side 720 and now back in nose grab 720 the opposite direction he got switch and regular back to back front side sevens there to end pass number one small adjustment on the headgear yeah hey you know what if you're gonna ride you might as well look good while you're doing it sam <laughs> brown putting together an incredible first pass like i said putting a different grab on every single trick and the judges definitely taking note of that as he comes in for his second pass all right check it out he's getting ready to pass that start of course buoy and here he goes going again across his body on that blind pete rose reaching and wrapping his hand all the way around his legs and then going nose grab crow seven a massive trick from sam brown that is the first chrome 720 we have seen all week long going double indie toe back roll sam brown is on fire right now can he continue oh, oh, he's, he's trying to roll out of it oh, and unfortunately uh, unable to tumble turn right there you know it wouldn't have counted uh much points anyway but sam brown trying to pull out of that backside 720 doing it on his stomach and unfortunately just not able to ride away but man oh man what an incredible <laughs> trick before that you know sam brown in pass number two absolutely unbelievable you see the crow seven right there from sam followed up by the indie toe double back roll and then right here where he needed it most trying to go back seven came up a little short case the wake and then just held on for dear life did not want to give up the rope so now it'll be on to the double up this will be huge for sam brown he's going to need this yeah, so now we see Sam Brown in the same spot that Tyler Hyam was in. He fell on his very last trick of his second pass after putting together a phenomenal group of tricks before that. But now Sam, knowing what Tyler's done, knowing what Massey's done, knowing what Nick has done, he is going to go into this double up, hopefully knowing that he has got to lay it all on the line. There is no chance that Sam Brown can make it onto the podium without an incredible maneuver on the double up. So the scores look like this right now. Nick Rapa out in front with a 93. Pifferetti sits in second with an 87. And Tyler Hyam in third with an 81.67. So it kind of stands to reason that Sam Brown wants to be in the podium right now with Corey Tuniston still waiting to go. Mark, he's going to need better than an 81.67 to 
to give himself even a shot. Yeah, absolutely, Todd. And Sam Brown, fully capable of that. He has some big banger tricks that he's able to do off the double up. And we have seen it time and time again. With his back against the wall, Sam Brown able to make lemonade out of a little bit of lemons that he leaves in his run. We'll see how motivated he is on the double up. So here we go. And it's all about Sam Brown needing something special here. We just saw an amazing double up coming from Nick Rapa. Pifferetti also was successful on his, as was Tyler Hyam. This could be a game changer for him as far as the overall standings go. Yeah, again, Sam knows that he's got to do something big. Just about a month ago, we were in this same position with Sam Brown. He came into a double up after having a fall in his run, and he did the unthinkable, landed a mute double back mob in a contest off the double up. So we know he's capable of pulling out the big tricks when it matters. And we're going to see if Sam Brown can do that here at the final stop of the Wakeboard World Series, the Wakeboard World Championships here in Portugal. So Sam Brown getting into position. He'll pick his spot and then it is showtime. Yeah, all eyes on the water. Cell phones are now pointed at Sam Brown, knowing that history could be made right here, right now, as that Super Aeronautique G23 circles around and gets ready to serve up the double up for this young Australian. There it is, going for the double lobe, and unfortunately, just coming up a hair short. A great showing from Sam Brown. Unfortunately, not ending the way that he wanted it to. So now it's sit and wait time for Sam Brown to see what the judges give him. Let's look at some of his highlights again. Look at this. Yeah, double, double up. Trying to get that last 180 right there to complete a full 360 degree rotation while doing two flips. And unfortunately, Sam Brown just coming up a hair short on that. Case in the wake, not able to complete the rotation and taking a bath in Lago Azul. So that may mean that Massi, Massi Pifferetti may be sitting in a podium position regardless of what Corey Tuniston does. Yeah, it is going to be close, but honestly, I think looking at the way the scores have been coming out, Sam Brown is going to struggle to even beat that 81 of Tyler Hyams. He did put together some incredible tricks, but I don't know if it was enough only getting seven tricks in his run and not getting a double up at the end of it, it's going to be really difficult for Sam Brown to break into that top three as it currently sits with Nick Rappa, Massey Pifferetti, and Tyler Hyam. One more athlete to go in the men's pro final. A champion will be crowned. Right now, it is Nick Rappa that is sitting in the top spot with a 93. Corey Tuniston knows exactly what he needs to do. And as Mark has pointed out before, he has the capability of doing that. He needs better than a 93, and the title is his. Well, there he is, the face 
of a champion, the guy who's currently sitting on top of the Wakeboard World Series leaderboard. Corey Tunison battling some injuries early on in the season, but man, he has come back firing on all cylinders. A true champion in every sense of the word. He has won the U.S. National Championships. He has won the Nautique Masters Championships. He has won the World Championships. Corey Tunison is truly a rider that has done it all and won it all. And now, here in Portugal, he wants to close the door, not only on the World Championship, but on the Wakeboard World Series as a whole. He is currently the leader on the overall series, and if he can ride well today, he could secure that overall series win. The mark to beat, a 93 put up by fellow Australian Nick Rappa. He has the lead. Pifferetti of Italy sits in second. Tyler Hyam currently sitting in third. Still no score for Sam Brown as Corey Tunison gets set. This will be the final run in the men's pro. Well, Corey Tunison going last off the dock as he was the top qualifier coming into this final round of action. He was absolutely flawless in his semifinal run earlier this morning and now looking to seal the deal here in the finals. And Corey Tunison having a Big advantage from a lot of the other athletes as he is a Nautique team rider. Corey Tunison training every day behind this Super Air Nautique G23, able to ride at his leisure behind the best wake in the industry. And right now, we're going to see how it all shakes down as our final rider in the Pro Men Finals enters into the course. Mark to beat a 93. Yeah, and Corey starting off dropping out of the sky on that heel side, front side, 900, two and a half rotations from CT, and then back in going toe side, 1080, three full rotations from Corey Tunison. Absolutely awesome maneuver right there. Then going crail grab on that toe side, back roll to blind. Corey Tunison feeling good so far. Now back in on the heels and going Whirly Dick. The Whirly Bird plus the Moby Dick of a backside three at the end. No other athlete has done that in the finals. No other athlete has done that the entire week. Corey Tunison landing two firsts here at the 2023 Wakeboard World Champions. The first rider to land a 1080 in their contest run and the first rider to land a, a whirly dick in his run. And that's just pass number one. Here we go with pass number two, 93 mark to beat, Corey Tunison. Here we go. Yeah, Corey Tunison definitely feeling the rhythm right now and going two times around on that mute half cab double back roll, absolutely stomping the landing on those two flips. Now back in wrapped for the heel side, backside 720. Two full rotations right there off of his heel side edge. Corey Tunison, two more tricks to make it a stand up pass. 
There's the Mute Mob 540 again, just raising the amplitude of every trick that he does. And now back in, there's the Melon wow. 5 Nautique team athlete, Corey Tunison, looking as good as ever out there as he solidifies eight tricks in that contest pass and two of them tricks that no other rider has done all week long. So a lot of firsts for the last. Corey Tunison of Australia, the last man to go in the men's pro final. And now he has the double up. I, I, this might be nail in the coffin time because, Mark, as we look at the replay of some of his tricks, these are unbelievable. Yeah, Corey Tunison feeling the flow out there. You see that switch toe 10. It's like he's on autopilot, not stressed, not overexerting himself, just in that flow state, Corey Tunison making it look oh so good, but he is doing some really difficult tricks out there. Well, it really will come all down to this. We've seen some stand-up runs already, but they also were accompanied with the double up, Corey Tunison knows that the eight tricks he put down in his contest pass are not going to be enough to win the world championships. He needs something off the double up to seal the deal in order to have the possibility of landing on top of that podium. All right, well, the throttles go down. Corey goes up. He knows the mark to beat is a 93 from Nick Rappa. Corey Tunison, very capable of doing incredible maneuvers off the double up. We've seen him do double back rolls. We've seen him do double back rolls to blind. He's even done some 1080s off the double up and now cheering up the crowd, asking for a little bit of that fan support. Hey, you gotta love when the athletes interacting with the crowd and vice versa, these guys feed off of the applause that they are given on the shoreline. I guess the question is for me, Mark, is do you think he's already done enough regardless of what he does here on the double up? You know, I don't. I think he's done a lot. He has absolutely positioned himself well, but he needs to land something here. It doesn't have to be out of this world, but it's got to be something really big. And right there, the stand yeah. grab on the hillside double back roll. I think it might be enough. Corey Tunison doing an incredible job having eight incredible tricks and a double flip off the double up man it's really hard to imagine a world where that doesn't take a top spot in the world championships check this out the amplitude grabbing it all the way through a very unusual grab on that double back roll corey putting the stale fish grab on it making it look absolutely awesome out there and wow what a final. Now it's a nail biter to see how the results pan out. Trying to beat a 93 put up by Australian Nick Rapa. Did he do enough? Did Corey Tunison impress the judges enough to take the world championship here at the Nautique WWA Wakeboard World Championship presented by GM Marine? We are moments away from finding out. I tell you, for my money, Corey Tunison did enough. That was just so impressive, so clean. You get the first mixed into that run. And then the double up was just the cherry on top. Yeah, you know, if you go back to Nick Rappa's run, Nick did incredible things that Corey didn't do. Right. You know, Nick had two different double flips in his contest pass. 
Corey only did the half cap double back roll, but Corey had the toe side 1080 in his contest run where Nick Rappa had a handful of nines. So it really could be either one's game. You know, in the end, it's going to be very, very close to see how the judges reward it. But man, another look at Corey's double back roll off the double up, grabbing it all the way through. Man, a thing of beauty for sure. Still waiting for the scores to drop. Everyone anxiously waiting to see, is that better than a 93? We've got the Women's Junior Pro coming up next. You've got Ashley Kasmer, Charlie Russell, and Anna Maria Kushkaskaya. Be the first ones to hit the water. Well, right now, the judges really nitpicking over those runs. You know, they don't want to make a wrong call. So they are going over and over again, trying to get every single detail right. And not only what tricks were done, but who held the grab longer, who had a little bit more amplitude. You know, all of those factors go into these scores and the judges have a keen eye to make sure they're not missing anything out there. You'll also see Stuart Ski, Kit Smith, and Kira Lewis in the final. So as it stands right now, Nick Rappa has the highest score, the 93. Pifferetti of Italy sits in second, and Tyler Heim sits in third with an 81.67. Just waiting to see what the score is for Corey Tunison of Australia. Did he do enough? You could make a debate for either him or Nick Rappa. Both of them were sensational, but the judge is now taking their time to see what kind of score they're going to give the Big Tuna. Yeah, well, you see the camaraderie right there uh, between two Team Nautique athletes, Noah Flegel and Corey Tunison. You got to love it. You know, as we've said so many times, even though these guys are competitors out there on the water, man, we travel the world together. And ultimately, we end up just like a big family. You know, we all care about each other. And when one of us performs well, man, everyone else gets pretty stoked for them. So that's so cool seeing the camaraderie on the dock and especially between two Team Nautique athletes like Noah Flegel and Corey Tunison. So waiting for the final score to drop, the official award from the judges. Does Corey Tunison take home the title or does it go to Nick Rapa? Full day of competition still coming. We've got the Junior Pro Women, their final. Then we've got the Junior Pro Men's final. And then we'll have a small break. Grab yourself some lunch. Great food carts that are here on site. And then we go right into the Pro Foil Strap final, of course, the Pro Foil final. And then we'll wrap things up with the Pro Wake Skate final. Yeah, right now we do need all of our junior pro women down to the dock. All junior pro women head down there. You see the judges still deliberating over this. You know, we have some of the best judging and driving crew in the business. They do not want to miss a thing out there, making sure all their eyes are dotted, all their T's are crossed. And right now, their pins are smoking after those last three runs. 
here in the pro men final. Still waiting for the score to come in. Everyone hitting refresh, refresh on the phones, seeing when that score drops. And as soon as it is, we will announce it. It'll either be Nick Rapa as the champion or it'll be Corey Tunison. Either way, the Australians are going to hold the world title this year. Three Aussies making the final here, along with Luca Kidd out of Great Britain, Tyler Hyam out of USA, and Massimiliano Pifferetti out of Italy. And the score is in. And the winner, with a score of 94.67, Corey Tunison takes the title. It was close, and Mark, you called it. The judges, they were spending a lot of time going over every little difference between Corey and Nick. You could make a case for either one of them, and it comes down to... 1.67 difference as Corey Tunison takes first, Nick Rappa holds on for second, and Massimiliano Pifferetti will be in third. Well, a huge congrats to Corey Tunison ending up on top of the podium. An awesome job, an incredible display of athleticism out there, and doing it all behind the naughty boat. Well, man, it doesn't get much better than that. And here with me in the studio is president of the Nautique Boat Company, Greg Maloon. Greg, hey, you just saw one of your top Nautique athletes. Not that you have any favorites. They're all family. But a Nautique athlete winning the world championships. Man, tell us about what it means for Nautique to host the world championships and the Wake Forward World Series every year. Oh, you know, it's great to be to be back with the world championships in Europe. And uh, it's been a fantastic day. We got Zara, Nautique athlete, winning the women's world title. And now Corey winning the men's world title, um, all behind that beautiful G23 out there. So uh, on this beautiful lake here in Portugal. So what a great, uh, great weekend. And so many, you know, it's been great to see so many of the amateur athletes performing well um, all weekend long as well. Yeah, you know, one of the great things about these Wakeboard World Series stops is it's not just about the pros, it's about the whole family. You know, we have kids ride, we have their parents ride out here, and Nautique, you know, really a, a family-built company, which is so, so cool. You know, you guys have always emphasized that it's not just about the high-performance rider, it's about everyone out there. Well, you know, we've partnered for over 35 years with the WWA to bring on some of the best events in the world. And, uh, you know, when, one of the things from the beginning, from the Nationals, which is the large in the U.S., which is the largest event in Wake, to uh, the Worlds here, you know, we want to make sure that the amateurs involved, we want that next generation of the sport coming up, uh, throwing down, they're going to blow our minds just like these guys are today. We don't, who knows what they're going to be doing in uh, five to ten more years out here at, at the Wakeboard Worlds. So, uh, you know, it's going to be amazing. Yeah, well, it's always amazing being out there behind the Super Air Nautique G23. You know, 10 years ago was the unveiling of that boat. And from that point on, it seemed like the sport had changed. You guys set the bar so high that, man, ever since then, we've seen bigger tricks. We've seen more accomplished on the pro side of things. But like you said, man, that G23, also serves up an incredible way for the amateurs as well. Tell us about some of the new stuff uh, that's in store for Nautique Boats and the Super Air Nautique G23. Yeah, you know, the uh, the G23 certainly changed the game of wakeboarding. And then wake surfing is, as wave surfing also became popular. But it's uh, such a fantastic boat for all around purpose. It's it got all the amenities you want. It was really exciting to be a part of bringing that to market. And now in its third generation, as you see it on the water today. Um, of course, we just launched the all new Paragon, uh, the ultimate version of luxury and, and weight performance coming together. 
uh, exceptional, um, exceptional reception to that across the world so far. And uh, it's amazing to, as we roll into 2024, um, where the boats have come. Yeah, absolutely. We got to be there at the U.S. Nationals when they unveiled the new Paragon 23 and Paragon 25. And man, what an incredible boat. I mean, like you said, it is the ultimate of luxury wake boats. It, it's just unbelievable, the technology and the creature comforts that you guys have packed into that boat. Well, it's certainly in a class of its own, and it's uh, just an amazing product um, from bow to stern uh, in the inside. And of course, the wake performance behind the boat is unmatched, whether it's wakeboarding, whether it's surfing. Um, so, you know, it's, it does everything for the, for the family and the athletes on the water. and just an incredible place to spend some time. Absolutely. You know, there are no bad days on the water, especially when you're on a nautique boat. So Greg Maloon, thank you so much for coming out here. What do you have to say to all the, the families, the riders that have traveled out here to Portugal to be a part of this World Championships? Well, we, have, we continue to appreciate our customers and uh, the, the wakeboard community um, as we continue to grow the sport, develop the sport, the, the support that's around the world for uh, wake sports and the, the lifestyles that people lead. Um, you know, it's, it's so fantastic. It's such a great family sport. And, uh, you know, we're just excited to, to play a part of making everybody's dreams come true. Yeah, well, I know a lot of dreams came true today. Again, a huge congratulations to Nautique team athletes Zara Kell and Corey Tunison taking the win. Greg Malone, thank you so much for being here. We hope you enjoy your stay here in Portugal. Thanks, Mark. <laughs>
Christian, do you have me here on Unity? Copy that. Christian, close your unity. All right, we're set to continue on here on the final day of the 2023 Nautique WWA Wakeboard World Championships presented by GM Marine here in beautiful Portugal on Lago Azul. Todd Harris, Mark Hager, Kurds Criddle with you as we get set to wrap things up in this afternoon session. Coming up, we've got the Junior Pro Women Final. That'll be followed by the Junior Pro Men Final. A lot of top flight athletes here as we will see six athletes going in two waves and we will see them all get the score that they hopefully want and hopefully deserve and then we will be able to crown a champion but six athletes mark have made it to the final of course ashley kasmer out of the usa charlie russell of australia then you have anna maria kushkoskaya and stuart ski also of the usa kit smith and kira lewis so three americans to wrap things up four americans in total making that six woman junior pro final yeah, really exciting for the United States. You know, they have had a ton of really talented young women recently enter into the junior pro women's division. And man, they have put on quite the display here at the Wakeboard World Championships in Portugal. So a slight delay as we get things sorted out. If you were with us yesterday, you saw some amazing riding, a variety of weather conditions. And of course, the end of the day it was hectic with a big squall that came through. So we are operating with less technology than we'd like, but we're getting it up and we're giving you the action. Here we go. Ashley Kasmer of the USA will get things started off. Yeah, Ashley coming to us out of Smith Mountain Lake, Virginia. And she's starting things off with that switch dance 180, just getting it going. There's a massive hillside back roll from Ashley Kasmer. This young girl has been competing with the WWA for quite some time. We've seen her at the regional championships. We saw her at the national championships. And right there, you saw the scarecrow as she came back in on the toes, did the toe side front roll to revert right there, coming back in with the tantrum, tripping off of her heel side edge, doing the straight up backflip, and Ashley Kasmer having a great first half. Well, if you're with us for the men's and women's pros, you saw an amazing competition. Congratulations once again to Corey Tunison, Nautique athlete of Australia, getting the win with a score of 93. And then Zara Kell, also of Australia, with an 86.67 to take the title. Now, the difference between the pros and the junior pros is they will not have the option for the double up. It is just the standard pass one, pass two, and we will see what they can get done. Yeah, absolutely. In these junior pro categories, you know, these riders are not limited on the number of tricks they can do. A lot of them might opt to only do four or five tricks, while some of them 
they might try and squeeze in a bunch of tricks. Now the judge is always looking for quality over quantity, but a little bit of quantity never hurt anybody. <laughs> Ashley Kasmer going KGB out of the gate for pass number two, followed up by that toe side roll to revert. Big tricks from this young lady. There's the heel side, backside 360. She's looking very strong in this final round of action. There's the toe side back roll. And right now, down towards the end of the course, Ashley putting in a melon grab, heel side, front side 180 to finish off two incredible passes, making a stand up run. Yeah, she seems pumped with it. So, a nice way to start things off. Just making it to the final here at the World Championships, quite an accomplishment. And now Ashley Kasma looking for a little bit more. A lot of talent in this one with four Americans and the Australian and, of course, Anna Maria Kushkaskaya also making it in to that final. So the judges have their work cut out for them as they go to work on what they saw from Ashley Kasmer. Yeah, we've got six young ladies in this Junior Pro Women's Division final, all falling under 18 years old. But don't let their age fool you. These young girls can shred. We just saw Ashley Kasmer out of the USA throw down a bunch of impressive maneuvers out there. One of the highlights of her run, obviously, being that wrapped KGB, the back roll with a backside 360. So smooth, super stylish, and Ashley Kasmer doing a great job setting the bar in this Junior Pro Women's Final for the rest of the riders to try and rise up to. Well, don't let the beautiful weather right now fool you. We're hearing reports that within an hour or two, we're in for some heavy rain. So we are going to press on and try to get as much of the competition in, in the best conditions possible. We've got the beautiful lake. We've got the beautiful boat. We've got the world's best athletes trying to give them all an equal opportunity to get this event in the books. Charlie Russell now out of Australia will be the next athlete to go here in the women's junior pro final. Two passes, no double up, many tricks as you want. Yeah, Charlie Russell, a young lady out of Australia who has recently made the move to Orlando, Florida to spend her life in the endless summer lifestyle. Going from Australian summer right into American summer. This girl hasn't seen a winter in a couple of years. And man, her riding has improved so much just because of the amount of time that she's gotten to spend on the water. And Mark, are you seeing that more often now that the athletes, obviously, if you're not training, your, your competitors probably are. So you have to do that. That's a move you have to make. You know, time on the water, there's just no substitute for it. You can train as much as you want, but ultimately the number of hours that you get to spend behind the boat is going to pay huge dividends in a contest like this. All right, so Charlie Russell in the water, up and running. We can report that Ashley Kasmer of the USA sport a 71. So the 71 becomes the mark to beat. Six athletes competing here in the women's junior pro final. And this is Australia's Charlie Russell up and riding as she gets ready to enter the course. All right, here we go. As she crosses that start of course buoy, Charlie Russell taking the heel side edge and laying out that tantrum as she's laying it down. Now back in on the toe side approach, going up and over the top with that toe side front roll, perfectly executed, landing really smoothly on the transition of that down wake and then following up with a heel side front side 360 two flips and a spin so far then coming right back in with the scarecrow that's the toe side front roll but adding the front side 180 to it charlie russell then putting some style out there 
doing that shifty stale fish, making it look really, really clean. So unlike the pros, it is as many tricks as you want on pass one and two. Clean first pass for the Australian Charlie Russell. She'll make the turn and head back for pass number two as we take a look at some of the highlights. She gets a nice pop in here. Good landing. Came up a little bit short right there, casing the lip. Try to clean that up as she makes her way back up. Laga Azul. Yeah, well, she's halfway home to a stand-up run. She got five tricks in that first pass. Now looking to carry the momentum into pass number two. And right now, Charlie going upside down with the heel side back roll. Awesome job. A very smooth landing from this young Australian. And now getting wrapped up in the switch front side direction as she unwraps on that cab 540 starting switch landing regular doing one and a half rotations in the air oh Ooh. no and then unfortunately going down on that heel side backside 360 you know charlie russell trying to fit in a couple spins in pass number two now she she's close is going to be falling very close to that three quarter buoy that's the point of no return for these athletes if they fall past the three-quarter buoy on their second pass, there simply isn't enough time for them to get back up on the water and get a trick in after the boat cleans off. So it looks like she is mm. right at that cusp, and the judges have made the call that she is still able to get that hiccup. I'll tell you what I would do. If I fell and I thought I was close, I'd start swimming backwards. Just a little back pedal, maybe give myself another 15, 20 feet. Why not? You know what? If you can do it sneakily, <laughs> then maybe that would work. The judges are on. You said it. They see everything. They have a keen eye. That is for sure. Well, right now, Charlie Russell back up. She's going to try and squeeze one more trick down here at the end of pass number two. Oh, mm. once again, trying to go with that backside 360. Unfortunately, it's deja vu, the same ending that we just saw, and that's going to do it for Charlie Russell. Well, respect that she went back to it and wanted to land it, but you get an idea of just how close she was. She must have been right at the three-quarter buoy because once that boat got up and planing, she got to the outside, got one shot at it, and just unable to put it down. So that'll put an end of Charlie Russell's run. Trying to top the 71 put up by Ashley Kasmer of the USA. That is the mark to beat. And these are happier days. This was pass number one as she was heading down the course. Yeah, you know, it's a simple trick right there, but that hillside shifty sailfish, man, she makes it look so good. Definitely one of my favorites that she does. She's got a lot of technical tricks, a lot of good style. Charlie Russell, you know, in the next couple of years, I have no doubt that she's going to do very well as she moves up into the pro women's rankings. You know, look at all these tricks, Mark, and, and you talk about tantrums, and you talk about, you know, the, the 720s, the 540s, things like that, the Tootsie Roll. This is representative of when you see it done the way they do it, and so smooth. This is hours and hours of practice and lots of falls. They just don't go out there the first time and throw a tantrum and drill it. No problem. But they've got it so hard on lock now because of the hours they put in and lots of falls. Absolutely. You know, you don't. Uh, you don't write a book without crumpling up some pages. And these athletes, man, they have put in so much time on the water. A lot of them have personal coaches that they go out and they train with. They also get to ride with a lot of their fellow competitors. You know, they practice together. They push each other. And ultimately, for the evolution of the sport to grow, man, they know they need to push each other as much as they push themselves to be better and better every time they hit the water. Well said, sir. So that'll take us to the halfway point. This will be the third of six athletes as Ana Maria Kushkaskaya will have the opportunity to see what she can do, waiting for the score to drop for Charlie Russell. But right now that mark to beat is Ashley Kasper's 71.
Here's a question for you, Mark, as we are getting a little bit of time and wait for Anna Maria to get in the water. How soon, and do you think it's even an option or possibly before wakeboarding goes into the Olympics? You know, that's a great question and one that a lot of people have been asking. You know, it is a tough question, though, because wakeboarding is such a unique sport. Right. You know, in most, if not all of the Olympic sports out there, they are all either gravity driven or man and woman right. driven. And so to have a sport that Introducing comes motor in sports. Yeah. with a machine, it definitely opens up a new can of worms. However, surfing has, or excuse me, Olympics have been going more and more towards the action sports yes. realm. Yeah. And so I do believe there is an opportunity for sports like wakeboarding to enter the Olympic movement. So Anna Maria now going to work on pass number one. Yeah, Anna Maria Kushkovskaya, again, a, not a name that many people are familiar with, but in the international community, she has proven herself to be very dangerous out there on the water. You can see a move like that Tootsie Roll solidifying exactly why she has made it here into the finals. We can report that Charlie Russell's score came down as a 60, so that'll put her in a second place still. Ashley Kasmer's 71 is the top score. Anna Maria now making the turn. She'll come back for pass number two. Yeah, check out this replay of Anna Maria's run. There's the scarecrow, that toe side front roll, front side 180, landing it clean, riding away smooth, and now Coming in for her second pass, Anna Maria looking to step her game up even more. There's the heel side back roll. Nice job, well executed from Anna Maria. And then in on the toes, the toe side back roll to Reaver, turning that last 180 right before she hits the water. There's a nice spin with a very slow and smooth heel side, backside 360. And then on her switch heels, the half cab 180, starting switch, landing regular, and doing a 180 degree rotation in the air. Trying mm. to go with the raft KGB, that would have been a cherry on top for that run. Unfortunately going down, and that's gonna do it for Ana Maria Kushkovskaya. Well, she went for it on that final trick, unable to land it successfully, but a great run nonetheless for her. Goes down, gets the seven successful maneuvers in, as we are now halfway through this field of six in the Junior Pro Women's. 71, the mark to beat, put up by American Ashley Kasmo. Charlie Russell sitting in second with the 60. Uh, did you see enough from Anna Maria Mark to move her ahead of Charlie Russell or Ashley Kasmo 71? You know, I'm not sure I did. I think she did a lot of really clean maneuvers. Right. But I'm not sure that she had enough of the higher point valued maneuvers to get her above Ashley Kasman. Yeah, the technical maneuvers, no question about it. If you're just joining us online, appreciate it. And where have you been? We have had a great day so far. Already crowning champions in the men's pro competition. Corey Tunison of Australia gets it done. He takes on the title. And Australia is celebrating two times with Zara Kell winning for the pro women. We're now on to the junior pro women's final. Ashley Kasmer, Anna Maria Kushkaskaya, and Charlie Russell have competed. And it's now on to the trio of Americans. You've got Stuart Ski, Kit Smith, and Kira Lewis still to come. Big day as the championship comes to a conclusion here at the Nautique WWA Wakeboard World Championships presented by GM Marine. Stuart Ski now getting prepared to take her run. 
I guess the next question I have for you, Mark, is after the World Championships, where do most of these athletes go? What do they do in preparation for the coming year, 2024? Yeah, you know, for the amateur realm of competition, this really is the top of the mountain. After this, most of the athletes will go home. They'll enjoy an off season and wait for the next round of competitions to start later next spring. But a lot of the pro level riders, there are still some fun contests that might not be a part of the wakeboard world series, but still hold some uh, high values from the culture of the sport uh, that they can compete in. Contests <laughs> like the Parks Bonifay Double or Nothing contest, that's still to come. Uh, some unique style contests uh, that happen at the end of the year, those are still to come. So many of the athletes will still be heading back to the United States, hanging around Orlando, Florida, the mecca of wake sports, and participating in some of these unique contests that aren't necessarily a part of the traditional wakeboard world series. All right, Stuart Ski represents the first of three Americans, and that will wrap up the Junior Pro Women's Final. We see the score coming down for Anna Marie. It's a 64-6-7, 6-4-6-7, which has her in second place. All right, well, right here, right now, out of Lake Gaston, North Carolina, this is Stuart Ski, and she goes big. Right out of the gate with that nose grab, heel side, front side 180. Stuart, known for some high amplitude in this junior pro women's division. She might not have all the high value technical tricks that a lot of these other riders do have, but man, she makes up for it in the amplitude that she puts out there. Just going so big oh. out there. You see the landings she's taking are so hard because of how high she is dropping out of the sky. So Stuart Ski unable to complete that right before the end of her first pass. Hard impact there, just gets fucked into the back seat and then loses hold of the handle. But it comes at the end of the first pass. She's got the full turnaround and then the full second pass to go. Getting back to our conversation about the Olympics, because I love pushing the Olympic agenda. Why not? Could they or should they, if they're going to keep motorized, you know, cars, boats, things like that out of the Olympics, could you see or foresee uh, Olympics with wakeboarding where they use cable cars? You know, I think of the two categories of wakeboarding, boat wakeboarding and cable wakeboarding. Right now, the way the Olympics are set up, I think cable probably has a better shot mm -hmm. at meeting the Olympic agenda because it takes the driver and right. you know the power sport uh, a little bit out of it. Where the cable is a set speed, you can just set it, forget it, and it goes. And that takes a lot of the human error out of the driving that is necessary for a towed sport like wakeboarding. But right now we've got Stuart Ski, the young lady out of Lake Gaston, North Carolina, coming into pass number two. I don't know if she's training for the Olympics just yet, but maybe one day here in the future as she goes upside down and halfway around right there on the toe side back roll to revert. Now, popping her board back into her dominant stance. There's the heel side back roll. Stuart Ski loves to flip. She feels super comfortable going upside down. And right oh. there, the switch heel side back roll, trying to do back-to-back -back, back rolls, one regular, one switch, unfortunately taking a tumble. And because it's her second fall, she is not going to get a pickup. Well, let's clarify, she will get a ride back to the dock, but she will not get an official pickup on that run. Uh, great job, Stuart Ski. A lot of great inverted tricks. There's one where she just does the 180 tail grab. Here she comes in, just stylish. And, and you said it, she, she likes the big air. Boom. Yeah, going absolutely massive out there. I love the pop that Stuart gets on so many of her tricks. She has that vertical style, taking tricks straight up and straight down. 
And then right here, that switch back roll, it looked like it was coming together, but just landing a bit in the trough of that wake instead of riding down the transition like she had planned. Yeah, it was super stylish, maybe a little too relaxed as she opened up before she hit that landing as Stuart Ski waits for a score to come in. It'll be a 53.33, 53.33 for Stuart Ski of the USA. Yeah, not enough to break into the top three. Right now, we still have Ashley Kasmer out of the USA sitting on top with a 71 and a comfortable lead over Anna Maria Kuchkovskaya with a 64.67. And then rounding out third currently is Charlie Russell out of Australia with a score of 60 even. Well, if you're Ashley Kasmer, Mark, you got to feel pretty good because she knows the worst she can do is third place. She will be on the podium with a top three finish at the Nautique WWA Wakeboard World Championships presented by GM Marine. As we turn our attention now to Kit Smith, she represents the penultimate athlete here in the women's junior pro competition. And then Kira Lewis will have the final say. So you could be looking at an American sweep if Kit and Kira go bigger than 64.67 to put themselves in a top three position. Absolutely. And both of these young girls definitely have the ability to make that happen. Kit Smith herself being one of the youngest riders in this junior pro division, I believe only 13 years old. But man, this girl rides well above her age. Originally out of Branson, Missouri, has made the move full time to live in Orlando, Florida. And she trains with the best of the best. Some of the most incredible coaches from around the world at Freedom Wake Park. That's where Kit Smith spends her time training and perfecting her contest runs. We're going to see how it all pays out for her as we turn her around and bring her into the course for pass number one. Mark, don't let the diminutive size fool you. This young lady goes big. Just wait and see what she can do. Doesn't take much to get her small frame up and going. Is that? Beautiful Super Air Nautique G23 makes the turn and brings her back around the course. And we'll see, man, this is going to be exciting to see. Knows exactly what she needs to do. Better than a 71 puts her into first place with one athlete to go. Yeah, Kit Smith starting things off with a heel side approach and going right into it with the heel side back roll. Nicely executed and a great way to show her confidence. She doesn't need any setup tricks. She's going right into the inverts. There's the toe side front roll. And now back in on the heels, going with a heel side roll to reaver, adding a 180 onto the back roll that she already did. Now utilizing that wrapped handle and coming in on her switch heel side kit, going into the air and unwrapping that heel side front side 540. One last trick down here at the end putting in the tail grab, just a little style trick for good measure as Kit Smith has a stand-up first pass. And five tricks there in pass number one for Kit Smith, so they'll make the turn, bring her back. It'll be interesting to see what she unloads on the judges here for pass number two. Does she go more inverted? Does she put more spins into it? Look at this. This wrap-up is a thing of beauty. Yeah, absolutely awesome right there from Kit Smith. One and a half rotations, landing perfectly on the transition of the down wake. Great job so far. Now into pass number two and doing the scarecrow right out of the gate. That's the toe side front roll with a front side 180. Now back in on her heels. There's a heel side spin, this time on her dominant stance. That's the heel side front side 360. And then following it up with a switch back roll. So we've seen a regular one and a switch one. Kit Smith showing the judges that she is fully ambidextrous out there, riding with either foot forward as she puts in a nice stylish grab and then just a toe side wake to wake to finish things off. You know, that's two stand up passes, making a full stand up run. Kit Smith out of Orlando, Florida. She is definitely going to be happy about that. Driver's favorite, no falls, clean up and back for Kit Smith. So we'll see what the judges do. Did she get technical enough? Did she do enough in the air and with her landings to overtake fellow countrywoman Ashley Kasmer's 71? That is the mark to beat right now. If she gets that, she'll move into first place. Guarantee yourself at least second place. She needs better than a 64.67 
to move into second. Yeah, and check out the replay of Kit's run. You know, she put down so many tricks and did them excellently. You know, you watch the way that she lands, just cruising down the transition of the wake without any issues at all. She got a great mixture of both spins and flips in there. And so I think Kit Smith is going to be really happy with the score that she gets from this finals run. And there was the straight air to wrap things up as she crosses the finish line. So Kit Smith makes her way back to shore. We have one more athlete to go before the champion is crowned. We'll see what the scores are for Kit as Kira Lewis is getting set to make the last run as the top qualifier here in the women's junior pro division. Yeah, there she is, Kira Lewis out of Orlando, Florida, more specifically out of the Claremont chain of lakes just west of Orlando. And Kira has been an overall junior pro series champion several times in the past. This young lady just on the cusp of entering into that pro women's division, but still able to ride here in the junior pros. And man, there's nothing that she would like more than to wrap up the 2023 season with a world championship title under her belt. Still waiting for the score for Kit Smith to drop. Then we'll be able to tell you exactly what Kara Lewis needs to get either the title or get herself on the podium. Well, Kira Smith, a seasoned competitor, she has been riding with the World Wake Association for many, many years. She knows what it takes to get out there, not just get on the podium, but get on top of the podium. And now we're going to see what this young lady has in store for us. As we get her to the end of the rope, throttles go down, and Kira Lewis gets up on the water. So here we go, the final competitor in the Women's Junior Pro Division. This is for the title. What does Kira Lewis have for us here on Laga Azul? Well, as that Super Aeronautique G23 makes a full circle to give Kira Lewis a straight shot into the course, all eyes are on the water. She is the last rider off the dock meaning that she was the top qualifier coming into this finals. She's got to feel confident knowing what the other riders have already thrown down. And Kira opening it up oh. strong, trying to go with the KGB right out of the gate. Kira Lewis not holding anything back. you got to respect the send. Unfortunately, that high-risk, high-reward trick not paying off for her initially, but... Because she went down early on in the run, literally on her first trick, she can still get back up and have enough time to get a ton of tricks under her belt. Yeah, Mark, you always say if you're going to crash, you might as well do it on the first hit or the last hit before the first pass. So those are the two sweet spots. So the Super Aeronautique G23 will swing back around, pick her up, and she'll have to do a full reset here. Now, remember, only one pickup. So that is her one mulligan, her one fall. And from here on out, she's got to be spot on. Yeah, you know, when it comes to falls, it really is a realtor's game out there. You know, when you're buying a house, it's all about location, location, location. And that's what it is with these falls. You know, we talk about the real estate that's left in front of them. Well, man, when you fall at the beginning of your past, you still have a ton of room left to get back up on the water, get into a rhythm, and hopefully get the tricks that you intended to land. And we're going to hope that Kira Lewis does just that.
going, second time's a charm. Yeah, going huge on that heel side back roll. This time, putting the KGB aside for now, sticking with just the back roll, then a scarecrow right there for Kira Lewis. And looks like she's going to play it cool for the rest of that first pass. Only getting two tricks in pass number one. Now that is definitely going to count against her. But Kira does have some really big tricks up her sleeve that she can pull out at any time. So a bit of a risk there for Kira Lewis as she has fewer tricks. But now she's on to pass number two. And she's going to have to be near perfect here and throw out some major maneuvers to impress the judges if she wants to win. Yeah, well, it looks like she's going back for another chance at that KGB, edging in on her heels, going upside down. Oh, no, and just sending it too deep. Unfortunately, not able to ride away. You know, the first time that she threw it, she came up a hair short. That time she did it. And she sent it a little too long. You know, I think if she gave her another chance, right. she would be perfect right on the transition of the wave. Unfortunately, that's her second fall, and she's not going to get another chance here today. Yeah, she cases it on the wake right here. Yes, yeah, she's got the pop, goes up. This time it was very clean. This is earlier in a run, but just couldn't deliver. And man, you put a lot of pressure on yourself when you have that first fall. But as you said, Mark, High risk, high reward. If you landed that first trick on the very first pass, she'd probably be home right now. Thinking about celebrating, but we're still waiting for scores to drop, so we won't make any announcement just yet. Other than that, Ashley Kasmer had the mark to beat a 71, and that was up until Kit Smith went, and then Kira Lewis. Obviously, her score is not going to surpass the 71. Well, with Kira Lewis's run in the books, that will conclude all of our junior pro women's final. Still waiting on the final scores from both Kira Lewis and Kit Smith to see how the arrangement of the podium will end up as we taxi Kira Lewis back to shore. Coming up next, we have the Junior Pro Men final coming at you with six athletes, three of which are from the United States, one from Australia, one from Japan, and your top qualifier coming out of the country of Italy. It is definitely going to be an interesting heat here in the Junior Pro Men's final as those six competitors take to the waters of Lago Azul here in Portugal. Well, right now, the standings look like this. Ashley Kasmer has the lead with a 71. Second place is Kit Smith's 62. And I don't think Kira's going to be able to top that. She does not. Final score for her is a 33.33. So congratulations goes out to Ashley Kasmer, who gets the win. The first athlete off the dock, she lays down a 71, and it stands the test of time as no one can get near her. So congratulations once again to the USA's Ashley Kasmer. She takes the win in the Junior Pro Women's Final. Barrett Swope, Jet Gibson, and Sean Takaiwa, they'll be the first three athletes to come out. And then you've got Bull Wildman, Alex Alban, and Federico Del Lago. They'll be the last three. All right, well, you see the first rider on the water, this young man out of Santa Fe, Texas, kicking it off for the junior pro men's division. Just finished his freshman year of college at Baylor University, Barrett Swope. Always an exciting rider to watch. Starting things off with the Indy Tantrum to Blind, 
doing that straight up backflip, adding the extra backside 180 right before he hits the water. And then Barrett going up and over the top with the dum dum, the toe side front roll with a backside 360 degree rotation while upside down. Barrett looking good so far. There's the skeezer. It's a switch chromo. And now Barrett going toe side, nice. backside 360. That's four stand up tricks to make up pass number one for Barrett. Now, once again, in this junior pro men's division, the riders not limited on the number of tricks they can do, but obviously the judges always looking for quality over quantity. So Barrett makes the turn. He comes back. This is pass number two. Great opening pass for him as he will kick off the action here for the junior pro final. To Mark's point, they are not limited to the number of tricks, but also no double up. Yeah, these junior pro men are going to be fighting tooth and nail right now. And then Barrett landing the switched toe side at 720. Two full rotations, doing it in the front side direction, but taking off and landing switch. Mm. Oh, man. And then trying to go switch heel seven right there, linking up 720 maneuvers would have been an absolutely awesome accomplishment for Barrett Swope. Unfortunately, going down right there on that nose grab, switch heel seven, landing low in his legs, but not able to pop up from that landing. Now, thankfully, that's only his first fall, and he should be well before that three-quarter buoy to get back up on the water and land some big tricks in the rest of pass number two. So Barrett looking for a strong finish as the boat comes around to pick him up, his one pickup. And as Mark pointed out, he's got plenty of time, maybe to get two, I don't know, maybe three if he works hard, but probably more like two tricks before the finish comes. Yeah, Barrett Swope, one of those riders that when he needs to, he can really throttle down and put in the tricks very quickly. He and his older brother, Parker, both incredibly high intelligent athletes. These guys both attending college, they have not uh, sacrificed their schooling in order to compete in wakeboarding. They are doing both simultaneously. And Barrett coming out with the x mobe the switch Pete Rose, right after that fall. You see he's hustling right now. Ooh. And unfortunately, that hustle leads to a mistake on that switch back mobe. That's going to do it for Barrett. Not going to be the score that he wanted, but he is setting the tone for this junior pro men's final. You see right there, back to the beginning of Barrett's run, getting a mixture of really impressive inverted maneuvers, the tantrum to blind, the dum dum, and the skeezer, that switch chromo and then putting that backside spin there at the end of his first pass. Barrett landing a lot of good tricks, but unfortunately, because he's coming up short on his second pass, I just don't think that his score is going to hold on for very long, as we expect many of these riders to have a full pull and a stand-up run. 61.67, that becomes the mark to beat. Barrett Swope of the USA now will sit and wait. A bit of frustration because I think he was so close that he'd be able to land that. I think his score, obviously, Mark would have been much higher, but it's a 61.67 the American, and now he sits and waits. Jet Gibson out of Australia. Yeah, Jet Gibson, a young Australian that has broken into this junior pro scene this year, making his rookie debut in the junior pro division and making the move over to America to spend that endless summer lifestyle. And he's training with some of the best riders in the business. 
living alongside and riding every day with guys like Nick Rappa, you know that's going to pay off huge dividends for a yep. kid like Jet Gibson. So Jet knows that 61.67 is the threshold to move into lead well within his talent set as he gets ready to take the cool dip. I don't know if the temperature is very cold. I saw a few of the other athletes that got in, and it uh, didn't take their breath away, Mark, but uh, it was noticeable. It, it woke them up. Yeah, it's definitely cooler than Orlando, Florida. I'll tell <laughs> you that much for sure. The water in Orlando right now feels like bath water. These guys jumping into Lago Azul, it's, uh, it's refreshing. <laughs> Let's say that. All right, well, Jet Gibson up on the water, looking to make his mark here in the Junior Pro Men's Division. So we're going to circle him around, get him ready, get him set to go into this first pass. All right, Jet Gibson popping his board around into his heel side edge and coming out with a KGB right out of the gate. The back roll, backside 360, back in on the toes. There's the dum dum, a toe side front roll with a backside 360. So two backside mobs right out of the gate for Jet. There's the tantrum to blind, another backside rotation. And now coming in on his switch heels, going switch heel seven, two times around right there from the young Australian. And then a regular stance, heel side, front side, 540 for Jet. A nice job, a stand up first pass. He's definitely setting a great momentum as he gets turned around and brought back in for pass number two. Moving at a quick pace today as we are trying to get everything in before the rain that's expected to come within, oh, the next hour or so. Nothing like what we had yesterday with big storm, but Jed Gibson doing some great work there on pass number one. Now it comes down to pass number two. He represents the second of six athletes to make the junior pro men's final. Yeah, Jet going heel side, back side five, out of the gate for his second pass, a very impressive maneuver, utilizing that blind landing. Oh mm. no, and then just landing a little stiff-legged on that crow mob, trying to take the scarecrow to an extra 180 right there, completing a full 360 degrees. Unfortunately, you see him just bounce as he hits the water. And mm. not able to stay on his feet. Now, fortunately, that's only his first fall. Jet is going to get a pickup. And hopefully, he'll have enough time to squeeze in a couple more tricks towards the end of pass number two. Now, one of the big factors that we have to have into play, the wind is picking up. Right. You can see the flags on the shore starting to whip around. And as it comes down, it is blowing into their faces on pass number two. So that headwind into this second pass, definitely gonna play a factor with these junior pro athletes. And Mark, is it true like a lot of other board sports is you can deal with the wind as long as it's consistent? You know, here on the water, the wind makes a huge difference. Right. It is obviously making the water rougher, but because a consistent wind will blow, you know, throughout the contest. It's at least the same circumstances for all the riders in the final. Jet isn't going to have the wind blowing for him and then not for the other riders, or at least that's the hope. But he gets right back up, lands the crow mob, linking it up with a Moby Dick, and then hustling yeah. for that trail grab on a tantrum. Jet Gibson putting in work, trying to get as many points as possible, despite having a fall in his second pass. So he went to work quickly, try to squeeze one more trick in before that red finish line buoy. We'll see what happens. 
as he's trying to top the 61.67 put up moments to go by American at Barrett Swoop, the first competitor to go here in the Junior Pro Men's Final on Laga Azul. Here, part of the 2023 Nautique WWA Wakeboard World Championships presented by GM Marine. Yeah, you see some of the highlights from Jet's run. Really, a ton of things that he should be super excited about. Unfortunately, a lot of it's going to be shadowed by that fall that happened in his second cast. Had he landed that and been able to link all these tricks together in a stand-up run, you know, I would say it's a no-brainer mm -hmm. that he would end up on the podium. But because he had that fall and then had to hustle through to get a couple more tricks in, I think it's going to be a really tough road for Jet Gibson to end up in those top three spots. Trying to top the 61.67, knowing that there are four more really talented junior pros to take their run. Next up, it will be Shun Takaiwa of Japan. He'll be followed by Bo Wildman of the USA, Alex Alvin of USA, and then Federico Delago of Italy will wrap things up. Everyone trying to get as much done as they can before the rain is expected to come this afternoon here. Beautiful Lago Azul. Ironic that uh, what for the past two or three weeks here in this part of Portugal has been really warm. Temperature is the stealthiest, coming around in the 30 to 35 range. And now we get the weekend of nice, cool weather as the calendar flips from August into September. Yeah, it's almost like someone flipped the switch. <laughs> as soon as September hit, they turned down the thermostat and turned up the wind a little bit. Not the ideal conditions, but you know what? Out here in beautiful Lago Azul, I don't think many people are complaining. No. So four more athletes to go before we wrap up the Junior Pro Final. Shion Takaya. Yeah, she comes. Um, and there you go. The scores for Jet Gibson coming in a 76.67. Again, a good score and places him in the top spot currently as it sits. But with four more riders left to go, you just don't yeah. know if that score is going to hold up against the rest of these riders. Well, we did see it in the junior pro women's with Ashley Kasmer going out and laying down a 71, which initially we thought, oh, it's some of a pedestrian score, but no one could put together a complete full pull without the mistakes, and so she went on to win it. Yeah, you know, in this junior pro division, a lot of it doesn't necessarily come down to their abilities. A lot of these riders, man, they're all fantastic in their sure. abilities, but the mental game of knowing I'm at the world championships. I have so much on the line. I'm a young guy or girl and man, my nerves are taking over. That is what happens in these junior pro divisions so often. Now we're gonna hope the nerves don't get to Shion Takaiwa out of Japan as he starts off with that toe side, front side 720 and then linking it back in with a mute grab on that switch mode. Now, popping his board background into his dominant stance. There's the 3-2-1 from Shion, the front side 360, rewind, backside 180, and then going with the cab 540. Looks like he's going to squeeze one more trick in down here at the end of his first pass. Oh, mm. trying to go crow five. He wanted to put an exclamation point at the end of that first pass. Unfortunately, it didn't pay off for him, but fortunately for him, it's only his first fall. So he is going to get a pickup, and he did it in the right spot. You know, we talked about location, location, right. location. Shion Takaiwa, knowing that he has this hard trick, it's a high-risk maneuver, he's throwing it at the end of pass number one. So now he can get back up on the water, use the turnaround, to clear his mind, hopefully come back into pass number two, fully renewed, rejuvenated, and ready to rock in that second pass. 76.67, a mark to beat here in the Junior Pro final. Six athletes made the cut, all trying to leave Portugal with a title to their name. 
Well, she owns a Kiowa out of Japan. A incredibly talented young man. Uh, he has been blowing minds out there with some of the rewind tricks that this kid can do, not only just in the spins, but he will rewind his inverse as well, where he is upside down spinning one direction and then put that handle in his back pocket to stop his rotation and turn the other direction. It's absolutely mind boggling to think through the physics of how it all works, but Shion Sakaiwa able to make it happen right there a massive tantrum to blind, grabbing stale fish all the way through it. Now back in on his opposite heels. There's the switch heel seven for Shion. Now back in on the toes. Going right there. That is the rewind. The Tootsie Roll rewind. A toe side front roll with a backside 180 that he then stops the rotation and rewinds mm. it. Man, unfortunately, going down on that toe side, backside 540, not able to ride away. That's going to do it for him. An awesome job from the young man out of Japan, Shion Takaiwa. Well, that's three riders down and three riders left to go here in the Junior Pro Men Final, two of which from the United States. The last off the dock going to be from Italy. And we're going to wait to see what Shion's score is as he gets taxied back to the dock. Let's take a look at this replay. There's one of those rewinds I mentioned. The 3-2-1 followed in by the heel 5. Now Shion put together a really solid run with spins and inverts. One of the highlights happened right here, this Tootsie Roll Rewind. I have no idea how he does it, but he makes it look so good. And then unfortunately, just coming up a hair short on that toe back five, casing the wake and tumbling down without the ability to hang on. Bo Wildman waiting his opportunity. He represents the next three uh, first of the next three to go, including Alex Albenfell, countryman, and then Federico De Lago of Italy will be the last man to go before the champion is crowned. Shion making his way back into the dock, waiting for the score to drop on him, trying to outdo a 76.67, which was put up by Jet Gibson moments ago of Australia. But Wildman ready to drop in, takes a glance around, gets an idea of the conditions. Hey, everything's set to go. And all he needs to do now is go out and perform. Yeah, Bo Wildman out of Warsaw, Indiana. Man, this kid is an absolutely incredible athlete. Not just a junior pro level wakeboarder, also a pro level wake surfer and wake foiler. Not only that, but this guy can shred the ocean waves just as good as he can shred the waves behind the boat. Bo Wildman, an all around waterman in every sense of the word. Now strapped in and looking down the barrel at pass number one of his finals wakeboard set. One run for glory. Here we go. Bo Wildman, the course is yours. Well, Bo starting things off with a heel side edge, going upside down and around with that KGB, the back roll backside 360. 
now in on his opposite heels, going switch heel seven. Two full rotations in that front side direction. Bo Wildman looking good so far. Now back in on his dominant stance. There's the heel back oh. five. Oh, no. And just landing a little stiff-legged, not able to ride away. You saw he had the rotation. Yeah. He landed in the transition of the wake like he wanted, but he was just too stiff in his knees, which ultimately led to him slipping out right there on the landing. So he comes around. And as you pointed out right there, he just cannot find an edge. Usually be able to carve right out of that and get right back to work. This time, just no putting the brakes on and getting himself righted. So he will get his one pickup right here. Kind of an awkward spot, not too far from the end of pass number one, but still probably has time for at least another trick or so. And then he'll make the turn and come back home, but no more falls, regardless of whether he's outside the three-quarter mark. Yeah, Bo Wildman definitely going to have a Difficult task ahead of him, you know, falling in the middle of his run. I don't know if he's going to have enough time to get a good trick in at the end of this pass. He might be able to sneak in a small filler trick if he can get it in before the end of course buoy. But that fall took up a ton of room in that first pass. Well, right there, you see Bo get right back up, land the trick that took him down. That was that heel side, backside 540. The judges love to see the confidence from a rider getting back up, claiming the trick that caused him the fall. Bo Wildman showing full confidence in himself, and you know he's got to feel much better going into this second pass. So here we go. No mistakes now for the young American, he's got to be clean all the way through, regardless of where he falls. He needs at least four good tricks, maybe five, to make up for that loss and that fall on pass number one. All right. Well, Bo knows that he's got to make it happen, and the time is now. Starting off pass number two with that 3-2-1, the 360 to a rewind backside 180. There's the Crow 5, a big trick from Bo Wildman. Now back in on his heels, going upside down and halfway around with that stale grab roll to blind. Now down here towards the end, he might have time for two more tricks. Oh, trying mm. to go toe side, front side, 900. Unfortunately, just couldn't keep his hands in sync with his rotation and fumbled the handle, not able to ride away. Let's look at it one more time. Some of the good and then the not so good. Yeah, Bo starting off strong in this run and really put together a ton of great tricks. He got some full rotating inverts. He got some big spins like the seven and the back five. This three to one, a incredibly technical maneuver. And then one of the big highlights, that Chromo 540, Definitely setting Bo apart from the rest of the field. Unfortunately, just couldn't button up this toe side, front side, 900. Going down right there, and that's going to do it for Bo Wildman. So Bo makes the slow journey back to the dock. Does not look like someone that put on the best show that he wanted to, but that's what he's left with right now. So waiting for the judges' score for Wildman. Also, Sean Takaiwa. Waiting for his score to drop as well. All we can tell you right now is the 76.67 that Jet Gibson has. It has him on top of the board with just two athletes to go. So more than likely, Jet Gibson, Mark, should be on the podium with just two guys to go. I'm not thinking that Takaiwa or Bo would have topped that 76.67. Yeah, Jet Gibson definitely put down an awesome run. Now, it did have some flaws in it. And so the door is still very much open for these last two riders off the dock. But as I've said before, this junior pro division, it's not always about the rider's skills. It comes down so much to their mental capacity, their ability to calm themselves and know that even on the biggest stage of wakeboarding, they have the ability to go out there and 
be the writer that they know they can be. That's the biggest challenge for these junior pro athletes. So final two competitors will be the American Alex Alban out of the USA, Federico Del Lago of Italy, and then we will wait and see what the judges think, who will be claimed the world champion in the junior pro men's final. And Alex looks locked in, doesn't he? I mean, he looks. Give him the final instructions to the driver. Yeah, Alex Albin, the young man out of Discovery Bay, California, you know, battled a big injury two years ago, really did some damage to his left knee. Now, fortunately, has finished the physio and all the physical therapy that came along with it. And ever since he got back on the water, he has been really, really looking strong. We are glad to have him back. And Alex Albin has been riding really well this year. As you can see, second to last off the dock means that he won his semifinals heat. So you know he's feeling good about it. Hopefully he can make it happen here in the finals. And he's starting off strong with that handle pass KGB, the back roll with a backside 360, then up and over the top with a nose grab, Chromo 540. The toe side front roll with a spin and a half mixed in the middle. There's the tantrum to blind, grabbing it all the way through. Alex Albin, he's got that West Coast style. And then going heel side, front side, 540, wanting to squeeze a couple more tricks in down here at the end. Oh, and there's mm. the skeezer, 540. He got switch and regular pro mob fives. No other rider has done that in the junior pro division. Alex Albin right now standing in a league of his own. Absolute heater right now for the young American. If he can put together another clean pass, pass number two, he may be sliding himself into first place. Look at this. Just one of his hits on pass number one. Very clean. Lands with the rope behind his back. Strong. Yeah, Alex Albin knows that he wants to come back and prove that that time off the water is not a factor for him. So far, he is doing just that. There's the backside 720, followed up by the dum-dum, the toe side front roll with a backside 360. Now, Alex getting wrapped up. You see him utilizing that small wrapped handle, the rope around his back, and going to three, oh. two, one. Oh, no. And unfortunately, taking a real hard fall right there catching his back edge looks like he's okay we're gonna make sure that everything is all right with alex because man that was a hard slam yeah he hooked up the heels with his back to the boat and then it was just full stop yeah check it out right here he got the rotation rewound it, but then let that handle get a little too far away from his body and got punished for that mistake. You know, a lot of people look at wakeboarding and say, well, you're just falling on the water. <laughs> How bad could it be? I'll tell you, around 22 miles an hour, that water feels a lot like concrete. Alex Alvin showing some true grit out there. He's a tough kid out of California. Getting back on the boat, he's going to get his board back on and hopefully continue on with the rest of pass number two. Yeah, that is as hard as it gets on the slam as Alex Alvin lands and was just too vertical and those heels hooked up on his board and he just came to a full stop, full whiplash, slams on the water. Ugh. Well, thankfully, it looks like Alex Albin is A-OK. -okay. And I believe...
falling before that three-quarter buoy, still going to get a pickup. You see him right back up behind that Super Aeronautique G23. He is going to try and squeeze one, maybe two tricks, but the way he's setting up right now, it looks like he just wants to end with a bang. Heel side, front side, nine nice. right there. An incredible recovery. A great job clearing his head after getting smacked on the back. Alex Albin getting back up on the water, doing exactly what he needed to do, and sealing the deal with that. His skill side, full side, 900. Start. Awesome job with that. Alex Albin. Nice recovery, as you pointed out, after a hard fall coming back. Here's some of the looks at his first pass. It was clean throughout, and then coming back, had that one hard hit. Yeah, right there. The Chromo 540, he did switch and regular Pro 5s. Super impressive stuff from Alex Albin. A great mixture of both technical flips and spins while putting in a ton of style right there. That hammer at the end. The heel side, front side, 900. Alex Albin doing a great job as he got back up after a tough fall. So Albin is done, and that leaves us with the number one qualifier, Federico Delago of Italy. He'll have the final stay here in this competition. Latest score we have still has Jet Gibson in the lead with a 76.67. Still waiting for numbers on Shion Takaya and Bo Wildman. Alex Alvin just completing his final run. Still waiting on numbers, Mark. You haven't seen anything have you pop up? No, it must be very, very tight where the judges are deliberating back and forth. They're trying to measure every single millimeter of the tricks that these athletes are doing. You know, a ton of pressure on the judges. I don't want to be a judge. I'm so thankful that it's their job and not mine to try and differentiate how to score each of these riders because every rider is different. They want to put their own unique twist on stuff. They have moves that some of them think are very easy while others, it would be very hard for them to learn. And so these judges have a very difficult task in front of them trying to make sure that they get everyone in the spot that they deserve to be in after watching their run. <laughs> well, right now, your final rider on the water. He was your top qualifier coming into this final round of action. Part of that Italian wake mafia. These young Italians have really taken the amateur and junior pro divisions by storm. Coming out of Italy, your last rider right here, right now. This is Federico Dal Lago. Federico, one of those young Italians that has been training under the tutelage of Massi Pifferetti, the pizza boy himself. And you'll see some of that style bleed through right here as Federico comes out of the gate with the Chromo 540. Now coming right back in, going between the legs, a chicken salad grab on that switch back move. Then going toe side, front side, 900. So far, Federico looking really, really comfortable out there. And now that signature Italian one-handed cut as he crosses up on the crail grab for that 
blind Pete Rose. Signature Massey style, but happening in a younger Italian version. Federico Del Lago putting on the marinara sauce here in pass number one. Let's look at this one more time. He gets four rock solid maneuvers in on pass number one. Look at that. Oh, gets deep on the crouch there. Able to re bounce right back up. Here we go. Pass number two. Final run, final pass in the Junior Pro Men's Final. Yeah, Federico last off the dock. So he has had the advantage of watching every single rider go before him. He knows what he needs to do. He's just got to make it happen here when it counts. Right there, the wrapped KGB, the back roll backside 360. Coming back in on his opposite heels with the cab 540, starting switch, landing regular, doing a one and a half spin, and then late rotation on that heel side backside five. So back to back fives for Federico Del Lago. Down here towards the end of his pass. Oh! Trying to go double toe side back roll. Unfortunately going down, but a great job. An incredible end for Federico Del Lago to try and put a cap in on the Junior Pro Men Final. Check out this replay. Federico absolutely going off in the finals so much unique style from him really technical grabs as he reaches all the way across his body on so many of those maneuvers right here that double grab backside 540 definitely a highlight of the pass but then trying to go for the double toe side back roll i don't know if he needed it right Man, he wanted to pull out all the stops, show the world what he's capable of, and man, what a show that young Italian just put on. So the score to beat was actually an 85 put up by Shun Takaiwa of Japan. Sitting in second place was Bo Wildman's 81.67, and we're waiting for a score for Alex Alban and then Federico Del Lago. But I'm telling you what, 85, that's a pretty healthy score for Shion Takaiwa. Yeah, Shion definitely showed up and showed off that he was able to be in the final, you know, put in some really unique maneuvers. Like we said, the rewind maneuvers that Shion has in his quiver of tricks always set him apart from the rest of the field. But Federico Del Lago had some incredible maneuvers as well. Uh, really unique grabs on Federico's part, but Let's not count out Alex Alvin as right. well, because man, Alex's switch and regular promo 540s, as well as a heel nine, you know, really could put him into the top spot or the top two spots. So the weather seems to be moving in as expected right around this time of day. A heavy rain warning has come into effect. So we will stand by and hold on the competition for now. You're watching the 2023 Nati. WWA Wakeboard World Championships presented by GM Marine. We hope to have scores for you soon so we can put a wrap on the Junior Pro Men's Final and we'll see who takes home the title. You guys don't have scores, do you? So we're in a bit of a standby mode. Oh, for the folks that are watching online, we've got a bit of weather that's rolled into the area. It's really playing havoc with the wireless reception that we have on the boats and the drones and all the other things that we need as far as scoring. So that's why we're having these issues. We're going to stand by. Hopefully it passes quickly and we get things reestablished. But for now, Take a short break. We'll be back with you, and you'll have much more of the 2023 Nati WWA Wakeboard World Championships presented by GM Marine. Get some pizza. It's 
actually still warm. It's quite nice.
Well, the rain that we expected is arriving now as we continue to watch the Pro Foil Strap Final. A lot of great competition out there, but these conditions, Mark, are going to make it a little more challenging. I know they're talking for some really heavy rain coming in the next 45 minutes. Yeah, you know, you can't control Mother Nature, right. but despite some of the inclement weather, man, we've had some really oh. incredible riding out here at the otherwise very beautiful <laughs> Lago Azul. Well, before we say goodbye, we want to give you a real recap of what we saw today. Of course, we kicked things off early because of the storm yesterday, short in the day. We had the men's semifinals in the pro competition. And then when it was all said and done, wow, what a final. And congratulations to Corey Tunison. Well deserved on that world title. Yeah, Corey Tunison came out firing in both his passes, also landed the double flip off the double up. Man, it couldn't have gone any better for him. Actually, his third. World Series title in a row, mm -hmm. which is absolutely awesome. Big congrats to Corey Tunison. Corey Tunison takes the win in the pro final. Second place goes to fellow Australian Nick Rapa. And third place, Pizza Boy, Massimiliano Pifferetti. He takes on third place with an 87. So a great showing, but the entire field that made the final with Luca Kidd, Tyler Hyman, uh, it was just, it was strong. Absolutely. But even though the men did incredible, we shouldn't overshadow the women. Yep, that's a next. Huge congratulations to the females that went out there and rode. Nautique team athlete Zara Kell taking the win. After a long hiatus off the water, she is back and better than ever. Big congrats to Zara. We'll see if she gets back on the snowboard as well. Finished in second place was Megan Ethel out of the USA. Her score of 81.67 secured that. And third place, Mary Morgan Howell. Finish up with a 78.67 to be on the podium, those ladies. The progression was impressive. It's going to be amazing to see what they do when we see them next year on the Gold Coast, where the Worlds will be taking place in Australia next September. Yeah, it'll be really cool for some of those Australians to be competing at the World Championships on their home turf. You know that it's going to go down there in 2024. So the foiling continues on. We want to give you a little more uh, bit of information before we say goodbye as the rain really starts to come down heavily. We go on now to the Junior Pro Women's Final, and it was Ashley Kasmer went first off the dock. Mark, she threw in a 71. We thought at the time, oh, it's a, it's a good score, not a great score, but no one could put together all the tricks. Anna Maria Kushkaskaeva finishing in second place and third place, surprisingly going to Kit Smith as Kira Lewis had the last run. Crashes did her in. Yeah, you know, it doesn't always end up like you want it to, but Ashley Kasmer doing a great job solidifying that high bar right out of the gate. And ultimately, no one else could rise up to it. And then finally, we just saw, just a short time ago, the Junior Pro Men's Final. These are the riders of the future. And how about Alex Alban? We saw him take a hard hit, one of the hardest I've seen in a long time. His heel edge hooked up, but he came back, did the trick afterwards, had enough time because he was outside the three quarters, and he ends up winning the Junior Pro Men's Final. The young man out of California with an 89.67. Second place going to the top qualifier, Federico Del Lago of Italy. And third place, Shion Takaiwa with an 85. So the future, I think it's in pretty good hands. Absolutely. Alex Albin not only showed his impressive skills, but his tenacity out there on the water. Like you said, he had a hard fall, but he got back up, landed a very impressive switch heel nine to seal the deal and ultimately earn him the win in that junior pro men's final. Well, if you're still interested in the Pro Foil Strap Final, which is going on right now, we've still got the Pro Foil Final and then, of course, the Pro Weight Skate Final. We will try to get those uh, stats, numbers, and final results up for you. But right now, everyone's kind of in a uh, salvage mode of trying to get the camera gear covered, all the electronics, as the heavy, heavy rain is coming to this part of Portugal here momentarily. So before we say goodbye, Mark, I will get your final thoughts on what you thought of these world championships this year in Portugal and the lovely host that the Portuguese were. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we keep asking people, hey, what do you think of Portugal? And the two responses they continue to come back with are, it's so beautiful <laughs> and the people are so nice. And I couldn't agree more. We have had an absolutely amazing time in Portugal. It's been an absolute pleasure to watch some incredible riding out here at Lago Azul. And man, the World Championships has been one for the ages. That's for sure. No question about it. And our thanks to Courage Criddle down on the dock, getting all the interviews yesterday throughout the rain, throughout the wind. We appreciate his hard efforts. We also want to thank the drivers and the judges. 
And one of the big stars of the whole thing, that super air nautique G23. You know, kids, be good. Maybe Santa Claus will drop one of those underneath your tree. I doubt it, but you can hold out hope because that boat is a thing of beauty, Mark. I know you know it. You love it. And it was great to have some of the folks from GM and Nautique come in and have some interview time with them. Absolutely. You know, the best contest in the world, the biggest stage in wakeboarding pulled behind the best boat on the planet. It doesn't get much better than that. So that'll put a wrap on the 2023 World Championships on behalf of Mark Hager and Courage Criddle and our entire crew. I'm Todd Harris. Thanks so long for now. You've been watching the Nautique WWA Wakeboard World Championships presented by GM Marine. For now, we stay so long from beautiful Lago Azul, Portugal.